हेलो 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 आ रहा है हेलो सर ये तो आवाज सुन चुके हो थोड़ा जवाब क्या यस हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स समोन प्लीज कंफर्म अमेया श्रद्धा अमन यस सर यस यस थैंक यू फॉर कंफर्मेशन सो यस सर uh yes so we are going to start uh, our session let me first introduce our session chair dr shravani shahpure ma'am she is a manager governance risk and compliance cyber security in capgemini and has 17 plus years of experience in academia research and industry in the field of data security cryptography crypto analysis image processing data science and machine learning she has completed her phd in electronics engineering from vichiti mumbai and iit bombay during her phd she work on cryptography and cryptanalysis problems she published more than 10 papers in international conferences and journals she is a public speaker and delivers lectures on various latest topics like cyber security blockchain security and crypto analysis at various international conferences events and public forums all across the globe her interest in research technology analysis and improvement in existing technology based on the latest research so we welcome you ma'am thank you uh, we have uh, the sequence of papers let me get the titles of the paper first we have face mask detection under the threat of covid-19 virus online second paper we will have face mask detection and recognition system then third one we will have information security by hiding data in binary images based on block diagonal partition pattern then next we will have deep learning based real time malicious network traffic detection system for cyber physical system and at the last we will have offline feature based intrusion detection system with support vector machine so i will request all the uh, author to be ready as per this sequence so let's we will start with the first paper uh, author name is dr bj dange uh, sir can you unmute yourself dr bj dange sir हेलो रिकॉर्डिंग हेलो यस गुड मॉर्निंग सर श्रद्धा वी बोथ आर इन सेम ग्रुप सो आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट यस नो प्रॉब्लम सो प्लीज स्टार्ट शेयरिंग योर स्क्रीन यस सर so hope it's visible okay good morning all uh, i am shraddha khalate uh, from sanjeevni college of engineering uh, thank you for this day and this opportunity uh, to all the authorized member so the topic name is a uh, face mask detection under the threat of covid-19 as we all know we are gone through a very dangerous period of time since 2 uh, years so this is the system which we uh, introduce for for the people uh, safety to take the mask these are the outlines for the presentations 
uh, let's uh, quickly go into the introduction part uh, where, uh, as we all know, COVID-19 given you identity to wearing a mask. Uh, before that, only mask wear is compulsion to the doctors for the virus protection. But once that virus came into the society, all we need to be take care of the safety for the health. Uh, detecting masks with the accuracy accurately and efficiently is become increasingly as much as important. Uh, as a, at, at the initial period of time, there is no such a data set available, uh, but to introduce a system where the mankind efforts must be as minimal as possible is necessary. So we all good researcher started working over on it. Um, so to this proposed system is to detect the face masks and identify those who are not wearing the mask, also giving the probability of at what level the correct mask on the position. Uh, these, uh, these In that system, there are two classes, like we can say two class model uh, for people wearing masks and those who are not wearing the mask. Uh, this system reduces the human efforts. Uh, likewise, there is a already automated system over there so the the one human cannot be needed to check out each and every individual person in any organization or any uh, any place where this system is installed uh, and the output will be the green box or a blue bo box as per whether face is with a mask or without mask uh, the objective of this system is to ensure the uh, meditate of you wearing a mask in public places or not only in the pandemic period but also now also uh, there is in chances as some cases are where uh, in the society present uh, just the the intensity is little minimal but there is uh, we all know such cases are still present uh, also to effectively provide the working of the model accurately uh, utilizing the uh, great technology image processing to identify whether the person is wearing mask or not and to develop an efficient computer vision based system focused on real time automation monitoring of people face face mask detection in public place uh, to motivation for this topic uh, is to uh, just given safety from the global global pandemic to each and every individual and uh, to give an enhanced uh, usage of image processing in the field of uh, human safety. Um, scope of the system is the system is uh, easy to operate and can be used in a crowded area where the, the health concern is uh, at the topmost priority and ensure the compliance of wearing mask of the system also provide the accurate uh, assessment of the individual in the public area, whether the person is wearing mask or not. Uh, these are the tools and technology which needed uh, for this system. Let's go through it very quickly. The algorithm which I have used is OpenCV. As we all know, it is a computer vision technology. Uh, technology or we can say framework uh, used for uh, most of the applications uh, like motion tracking and facial recognition, object detection uh, and segmentation. Feature of the OpenCV is uh, there are many more, but in most of the image processing, uh, we use the OpenCV technology. Uh, also, we use the NumPy libraries for some mathematical uh, calculation to just uh, check out the, the confidence level during the pre-processing of this system. Uh, con convolutional neural network is uh, used to train the model uh, by using the training data set. ReLU layer, uh, such an act, such like activation function is used to activate those uh, neurons. And uh, these are uh, max pooling is used to select out this matrix, uh, the, the essential matrix, as we can say. So this is the system architecture. As you can see, we first of all load the uh, mass uh, data set. Then we train the uh, face mask classifier with Keras and TensorFlow, and then serialize the face mask classifier to the disk. Then phase two is uh, by using the load face mask classifier from the disk, we detect the image face images 
through image or through video stream and then extract the region of interest from that and apply the classifier on that region of interest image uh, to check out whether the person is wearing mask or not so this this these are the uh, only the introduction part, part as i mentioned uh, to you the image capture face detection mask detection these are some real time results which i uh, gain from my system as you can see this is real time images though the if the mask is on position it, it will show you the result 100% the probability and the green, green box enclosed that image and these are the results uh, through for no mask uh, the blue box will enclose the image with the percentile these are some uh, graphical results the testing image sizes and the based on the accuracy for the mask type as you can see uh, the by testing we got the accuracy uh, which is highest to the 99% and this is for no mask. Uh, the conclusion for this system, it is useful uh, in the recent time to detect the face mask. Uh, it helped to uh, ensure the reduce the manpower and the, uh, uh, you can say the, the one more person in the health uh, safety and to avoid the spread of COVID-19. Uh, we can also use as in software application and deploy it uh, uh, into certain area where the crowded places uh, like uh, um, hotels and malls and airport, uh, airports and the school uh, and any organization level. Uh, and the future scope for is that uh, you can um, use some IoT based structure to give an sanitization tunnel to open the gate and to also embed the temperature sensor to it. And also the next future scope can be to uh, check out the actual type of the mask, it, whether it's an N95 surgical or a cloth uh, homemade mask. Um, that's These are some references which I collect uh, some of the material from from these references uh, to get an idea over this system and the existing system, how it works. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Much, it's, uh, it's really a wonderful topic. I think it's uh, what we can see is uh, current uh, situation. We are we had gone through a very tough time, and uh, now it's a need of a, a you know R. Um, I think you have done a good job uh, uh, involving CNN. Uh, I had a few questions. Like I was wondering if you have considered the real time images into this, like video streaming, or uh, the static images that database first thing. Yes, ma'am. So it was static images. Yes, uh, some images I collect, as you know, at the at the very initial time, there is no certain data set available. So Pranjana Bandari is the one who actually created a database during that time. So I collected that from uh, that data set I collected. And also I included some browser images and some real time images. Okay, so it's a it's not a live uh, like streaming. It's not uh, on the video streaming. It's on the uh, static uh, images. No, it's also, uh, yes, uh, for uh, video uh, streaming, it gives an uh, accuracy up to 98 or 97% because when it's uh, very crowded, so it is when, I, as you all know, I'm not using a supercomputer. So to detect that uh, on my PC, it is taking a little bit time also, but image, it is going to give you the 100% accuracy as still date. Okay, so how many images? 500 is the maximum size that you have tried. Uh, it's a, for a training, uh, it's a data set of near about 200. Uh, from that, uh, like 990 is for mask and for without mask, it is uh, like 1100 up to like that way. And for uh, testing, I have checked out uh, like more than 500. Okay. 
and uh, was so ma'am can i sh can i share a little small demo with you for that for sure please please go ahead Just a minute, ma'am. Actually, uh, it's a little bit giving a problem for sharing. I don't know why I'm not getting to sh like possible to share the video like share screen. Okay, got it. Hope my screen is visible to you very at great level because uh, there isn't like raining heavy raining. That's why. Whether it's visible to you, ma'am? Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead. Okay, ma'am. So uh, this is actually the project like the the code and now you can see the output so it's a pre-recorded actually because it take a little bit time so i don't want to waste that time for that so taking the real-time image and based on that, it is going to predict you the result on the terminal as well as on the screen, as I mentioned on boxes. So. Now you can see the box is little bit up front. Let me take another one. So here you can see. Yeah, yes, yes. Right, there is no mask for hundred percent. So here is the output gets stored. So output is the I'm giving the path for that output in the the code. So it'll get like that way. And this is the another one for mask. Yeah, it's good. <clears throat> and if it is uh, like like half cover, then also it is giving you the result. If it is a half halfly covered, here you can see no mask for ninety two percent. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much for this uh, demo. Actually, it's giving the good okay, idea. The thing is that uh, research is endless. I mean. I, I, if I'll keep on suggesting you, it will go into a number of directions. So it's up to you how you wanted to take this uh, ahead because this... Uh... So, Ma'am, one more thing I want to show you. Actually, I got so much interest during the research time. And as you can see, I built a model like this. It is actually in future scope, but I, I actually did like that way where the servo, you can uh, see the servo motor I involved like IR sensor and RFID reader. So it is actually, I published at that time, actually give the paper idea. So I didn't include that in my paper, but as you can see, it is uh, useful to like showing the result to you, like whether if the, uh, the temperature is on point and the person is wearing the mask, then the green light will uh, glow up. And if the, the uh, right, red light will glow that means the person is not wearing mask and temperature is also not healthy and at that time the tag I introduced a tag for the uh, like RFID tag for the identification of that person yes it's good really good I mean I that's what I was saying it's an endless thing 
you keep on improving but uh, i'm happy that you are still experimenting so all the best yes ma'am thank you ma'am thank you so much have a good day hello ma'am hello panel am i audible yes ma'am yes yeah actually uh, ma'am uh, uh, our college has a nba committee now and it is the second day so if uh, it is possible to take my presentation now uh, i will be free because i am nba coordinator as well so uh, i request you to consider me for uh, presenting me my present, uh, paper screen no problem okay thank you sir may i share the screen yes yes if it is okay ma'am you can uh, start camera also okay one minute sir yes so good morning one and all here present i hope i am audible am i audible yes ma'am please continue okay thank you sir so myself mrs gyankamal j chajer uh, i am a phd scholar at uh, bharti vidyapeeth uh, college of engineering pune and pursuing my phd in the area of uh, information sec security where i am hiding data in binary images so in line to that i am now here presenting my paper uh, titled information security by hiding data in binary images based on block diagonal partition pattern my guide is dr bindu gog ma'am introduction due to the shift from paper to electronic paradigm much information is transferred in the form of binary images as we all aware that we now the trend is uh, instead of writing down the things the photographs are taken for many documents even some medical images and many documents are transferred which is in the form of binary uh, images so during transmission the confidentiality and security of information is compromised so uh, the stenography and watermarking are the most popular means to serve this purpose in both the techniques secret data and a watermark are embedded respectively in cover images taking care that it is imperceptible so hiding data and keeping changes unnoticeable caused by hiding is a significant challenge for binary images most of the research for hiding data is on gray scale images where we can have 256 shades and the color images where we are getting 256 in three multiples that, that is rgb uh, domain so uh, we are getting a large range of uh, pixel value change where it is very very difficult in case of it is a binary images so in such images data hiding is done by slightly changing the shades of the selected pixels considering hvs system so that changes are undetectable in case of gray and color images so this unnoticeability is required to be maintained as well for binary images which is challenging due to availability of only two shades white and black so the key idea in binary image to achieve this is to identify area area of the image that can be utilized as much as possible in its original form to hide data so that less number of pixels are required to be changed now when uh, this uh, is to be identified how we can fill the gap so literature is surveyed and it is identified that the, the hiding of data is possible in two domains 
uh, that is spatial domain and the frequency domain. So if uh, the spatial domain is used, then there are certain techniques which are uh, commonly used. So substitution, then uh, fixed partitioning of images, then boundary modifications, modifications of character features, modifications of run lens, etc., are the way or techniques adopted for spatial domain uh, hiding. Advantages is this method has a good data hiding capacity. If an image is found to be fraudulent, the owner of the secretary can spatially locate the iterations to help discovering the intentions of the hacker. The visual quality is good maintained. Limitation is this technique is not robust to printing and scanning as it adds on some new dots and that can uh, make difficulty while extraction of exact data. Literature survey uh, in the transform uh, domain. So generally uh, DCT and DWT, this transformation domains are used. The advantage of uh, using uh, this domain is the lower frequencies which can be marked directly for transform domain approaches adopted. Transform domain techniques are robust against attacks and transform domain techniques have good computational uh, efficiency. Now the problem is statement is the this paper is proposing a novel block diagonal partition pattern based method for hiding data in binary images, which provides comparatively more data hiding capacity, minimizing visual distortion. The proposed data hiding method is this method considers image blocks of size three by three pixels and the diagonal partition patterns based on the count of block black and white pixels in each diagonal partition. The potential block to carry data bits are identified. The connectivity among fixes are also uh, checked to get the potential blocks uh, to be the finally declared block for carrying the data. This is used for checking the distortion factor. So the central pixel of a block chosen as a data bit carrier before hiding data, it is encrypted twice to keep data more secure. And for extracting the hidden data, the original image does not require, which is again a new uh, way or that is an advantage of this technique. As all block holding the data satisfy the embeddability criteria before and after hiding. The proposed method modules are first is block processing, second encryption, third embedding and fourth is the extraction. So in block processing, we are very first checking the block suitability for uh, carrying the data. So very first block is partitioned in the pair of lower and upper halves named as LH1, LH2, UH1 and UH2 as it is shown in this figure. So this is a three by three block and the pat, uh, block diagonals, two types of di uh, two diagonals are used and we get uh, patterns LH1, LH, UH1, LH2 and UH2. Then the black and white pixels are counted in each block that diagonal partition and paired. So as it is shown here, now here, these are the pairs and for every such diagonal partition, the pattern is having how many black and white uh, pixels are counted. So as it is shown here in UH1, we can observe that there are four black pixels and two white pixels so like this the analysis is done for all the diagonal partitions so before flipping that means if the central pixel is this then what are the counts and if we flip the central count uh, central pixel then what will be the count is tested here then the black and white pixels are counted in each diagonal partition and paired distinct pairs are counted the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal connectivity are also uh, counted. And if count is greater than two, then block is suitable to carry data. So I would like to explain it here. So very first, as I have discussed, the count is maintained in such uh, patterns uh, in the tables where before flipping and after flipping, the analysis is written here. After this, as it is uh, said, they are paired. So here the pair is 4, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, and 5, 1. Similarly, after flipping, the pair is 5, 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, and 6, 0. So these pairs are formed. Then 
what is the count of such pairs before flipping and after flipping is written in this table so as we can see here 33 three, uh, is coming two times so it is maintained in this table below it so 2 42 pairs are coming one time 51 pair is coming one time and after flipping it is 42 patterns are two times 51 is one time and 60 is one time after this the connectivity is also changed so horizontal connectivity is like this vertically like this and diagonally uh, like this so before flipping and after flipping the connectivities are checked so as we can see here before flipping the three all the three types horizontal connectivity is also exists vertical as well as diagonal so we write here it is connectivity hvd if only out of this three two are existing then we write hd or hv or whatever vd like this now after flipping we are again checking for the connectivity so again we can observe here for all the patterns uh, sorry for all the uh, connectivities we are uh, getting horizontal vertical and diagonal connectivity in the block after this the this are counted distinct pairs so here there are three distinct pairs which is written here again here three distinct pairs which is written here so since it is greater than 2 and we are also having the connectivity which is also greater than 2 so we consider this block suitable for hiding the data so the algorithm for checking embeddability as i have discussed divide the block diagonally with the names lh1 uh1 lh2 uh2 determine the count count the number of distinct count pairs next check the connectivity if the block has a horizontal vertical and diagonal part uh, connectivity then c is a and if it is greater than 2 that means it is necessary either hv vd so two connectivity is must to consider that particular block then it is embeddable others otherwise it is unembeddable if block uh, is doesn't have any of the con connectivity then it is simply discarded to uh, secure this particular method the encryption is applied two times so very first original data is taken and one secret key that is encrypted using the xor then we are appending the header which has the information about what is the length of message this is done to uh, avoid unnecessary scanning of the image so that the time complexity can be reduced so this appended header with the encrypted data is again encrypted using second secret key and this encrypted data is now hidden in the image so same thing is uh, mentioned in this algorithm which i have just explained then the embedding process so in embedding process we are taking the original image we are dividing in uh, three by three blocks we are partitioning it diagonally we are checking embeddability block which is from earlier discussion if it is embeddable then we are embedding encrypted data which we have discussed uh, earlier in the encryption part and then we get the hidden uh, data image as an output of the embedding process Simil, uh, the same thing is explained in this algorithm which i have explained then the extraction process and the extraction process we are having the image with the encrypted data we divide it again we partition diagonally then we test block for carrying data or not so here since uh, we have verified whether the block is uh, embeddable or not uh, before and after hiding so all the blocks who uh, which has this connectivity satisfied those blocks central pixel value is considered as the data if it is black then one if it is white then it is zero then those bits are extracted based on the header extracted and the uh, then the bit extracted then the extracted bits are decrypted and header data is taken out using the secret key after header data only that part of the image uh, is uh, scanned to get the encrypted data that encrypted data is again decrypted using the first secret key so that we can obtain the original hidden data so the same thing is uh, represented here now to evaluate the technique uh, we have used performance matrix peak signal to noise ratio then mean square error but these are the uh, matrices which are used for generally the grayscale or the the color images 
so as per the peer in the paper 31 it is mentioned that the suitable method to check the techniques uh, efficiency or uh, quality uh, the distortion factor is used where the pixel which is flipped it's around pixels weightage uh, are considered and then distortion factor is identified and that is some and accordingly it is decided that after hiding the data what will be the distortion factor if this distortion factor is less than 0.5 then we are considering those um, and uh, it gives the good visual quality even after hiding the data um, multiple uh, experiments are uh, conducted on different images the sample images are shown here so these are the some standard image and some are images which are taken from uh, reference papers and the data is hidden in such images and after hiding uh, the images are looking like this where it is very difficult to notice the existence of hidden data because uh, the visual quality is maintained considering the uh, distortion factor so these are the size of the images these are the embeddable blocks which are satisfying the embeddability criteria now uh, the sample uh, example consists of 64-bit uh, data. So in that, about this many pixels are only uh, flipped to embed the 64-bit data. So it indicates that about more than 50 to 60. Uh, last one minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Last one minute, ma'am. Okay, okay. Yes, ma yes I'm finishing. Uh, so here, uh, embeddable blocks are counted. This is showing how many flip pixels to embed the 64-bit data. Here, the MSC and PSNR is calculated and uh, distortion factor is calculated. So this is the performance analysis uh, using the graph for the same obtained results. So I'm concluding now this paper. Uh, in this paper, we have proposed a novel block-based method to hide data in black and white images, where three by three block diagonal partition patterns analysis and connectivities deciding suitability of uh, to carry data. This method provides more security to hidden data as encryption is applied at two levels. Result shows that about half of the data bits are embedded without flipping pixels. The distortion factor is also ranging from 0.4 to 0.5, which shows difficulty to detect presence of hidden data. So the hiding capacity is image pattern dependent and size of data dependent. Original image is not required for extracting data as blocks satisfy embeddability criteria before and after hiding and no extra book booking, uh, that is bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is required to locate the pixels carrying data bits. This factors shows that method is providing good hiding capacity security to hidden data, causing less distortion uh, after hiding the data. This method can be used in copyright protection, fingerprinting, authentication, integrity checking, intelligent browsers, automatic copyright information, etc. So this will prove to be an efficient data hiding method for hiding data in binary images in which we can do the uh, hiding of data so future work is various ways we can adopt to match block patterns with information bits to get more choice for maximum matching which may reduce distortion and increase capacity it can be also applied for watermarking and stigmography so these are the references for uh, my uh, topic thank you thank you so much can you can i see the references please Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, sir. So, any recent references? Yes, ma'am. Any recent references? Yeah. So these are the recent uh, references. 
then these are the papers which are published in 2020 and these are the papers which i have published uh, recently the last two years okay it's a, it's a very interesting and different topic uh, that i can say uh, i have few questions actually um, when you were saying you have applied encryption so and yes. you were saying the uh, only uh, xor so what kind of encryption have you actually applied yes ma'am what what encryption you have applied xort is done so secret key plus the message which is converted into binary form ones and zeros so uh, when uh, we are getting the encrypted data and if we again decrypt it with the same secret key we get the original message okay so it's, it means that it's it's kind of it's not a standard uh, encryption method that you have applied right so uh, no, normally like you know uh, because uh, see, in encryption when we are saying it's not only yeah. encryption, right uh, it needs some of the operations like um, substitution and uh, diffusion and confusion kind of things so okay. uh, uh, i am uh, uh, i mean it's really a different thing what you are showing but I, when you are claiming for uh, integrity or you know uh, the authenticity uh, kind of thing and uh, okay. when uh, uh, as a research student uh, i would like to um, uh, propose you like uh, uh, please try to incorporate uh, the um, uh, encryption in a proper way so that uh, you can claim it in a correct way right so if you will say just a secret key and xor operation it is very easy for uh, hackers yes. or crypt analysts yes to, yes uh, yes, yes ma'am uh, but uh, the thing is uh, since the secret key is only known to sender and receiver even though the xoring with what they will do the xoring this is one thing and i actually uh, admit it that uh, if we want to make it more secure we can adopt many rsa or md md5 like this algorithms uh, but my research focus is in identifying the technique how to locate the pixels in a black and white images where we can hide the data so if we can use any encryption technique so we will get output as ones and zeros so uh, that is one part but my most fo more focus is on identification of locations in the images so that the visual distortion will be less you are correct i i absolutely agree because when we are ac uh, adding encryption definitely it will bring the distortion uh, but then you cannot claim that it is encrypted because uh, as you are saying only secret key is the one which will save your um, you know uh, image uh, from the attacks which is uh, quite not true being in trip, uh, crypt analysis i can say that because you know uh, then there are brute force method which is very commonly used and you know it is possible to decrypt so again what size of uh, key you are involved uh, using uh, will uh, uh, like uh, again but when the longer is the size maybe the distortion will be more so it's kind of a balanced no uh, may, may i interrupt ma'am yeah sure uh, yeah uh, actually distortion we are talking about is if you are changing more number of pixels in the image then it is causing a, a distortion so what is my idea is whatever is a original image in the, we are not changing size at all we are not disturbing that image it will be looking as it is uh, in original form so the uh, point is we have to look at such pixels in an image where if we flip that black to white or white to black it will not be noticeable artifacts it will not be noticeable so uh, otherwise what happens if we normally use lsb or some method substitution we are taking some uh, calculation and uh, putting any pixel anywhere in that case uh, distortion will be quickly identified so that's why the um, l shape patterns or edges uh, like these things are considered so in my method uh, uh, this is a new thing that i'm using a uh, diagonal partition patterns and connectivity is also observed so with this uh, one thing is my image size is not changing second thing is um, we are identifying such pixels in an image where it is not causing visual distortions so distortion factor is yeah yes i am not uh, denying that uh, you are trying to work focused on that when mm -hmm. but when you are uh, 
adding the encryption factor it's very yes, important sir. to you know uh, yes, use it in yes, a correct yes. way otherwise yes, yes, uh, it's of uh, no use so not, uh, in the field of security on a, or a cryptography it has been said that weak encryption is more dangerous than yes, without yes. encryption so uh, that is my uh, because uh, see thing is that it's a research right so uh, yes yes if you can think over on this aspect uh, in uh, yes, maybe i'll definitely uh, definitely uh, the things yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you ma'am thank you ma'am we will go for next paper face mask detection and recognition system the author is here please share your screen ma'am you can uh, stop sharing your screen yes so sanjana gore i think yes sonali ko hello miss sonali please uh, start with the presentation so uh, good afternoon everyone uh, we are from yashwant rao chavan college of engineering please uh, put your ppt is on the presentation mode yes continue please good afternoon everyone we are from yashwantrao chavan college of engineering nagpur uh, our uh, presentation is on face mask detection and recognition system uh, which is presented by uh, sonali gaiki ramya madipati uh, sanjana gore and rucha deshmukh next slide please let's go through the contents we'll start from problem definition and uh, uh, further end with the social relevance uh, so let's go to the problem definition so cnn is a type of artificial neural network used in image recognition and processing that's what we have used in our uh, system which is specifically designed to process pixel data to implement face mask detection and recognition system as a whole uh, so which refers to detect a person is wearing a mask or not so that the person without mask get no uh, permission in public places to stop spreading the viruses spread uh, without wearing masks next uh let's go through the introduction part uh, let's start from abstract covid-19 basically is an uh, pandemic has uh, swiftly disrupted our day to day lives affecting the international movement so wearing a mask to protect one's face has become new normal during covid time Uh, also many public uh, service providers will expect the clients to wear mask appropriately to partake of their services uh, in school as well as in colleges almost every uh, public play, uh, space uh, uh, it will expect that students must wear mask so the attendees will be taken by the system itself Uh, by we are uh, verifying whether students wear a mask or not if no mask will be there then they will uh, not get the attendance or uh, permission to enter the space uh, this technique attains excellent accuracy 
that we have created uh, we investigate optimal parameter values for the cnn model in order to identify existence of masks accurately next slide please Aims. Our aim is to work on both saved images and real-time images. Uh, whereas uh, the detector will recognize the mask face, and if the mask is there, then it will uh, allow him or her to enter the uh, particular premises. If mask is not detected, then the system will not. Uh, the system will show an alert on the screen. Also, in recognition, we have uh, added the attention system. And our aim for attendance system is to allow only students with mask, and for other students who do who does not who do not wear a uh, mask, then they will not get the attendance. This is for the attendance system. So objectives. Uh, let's go through this. Uh, let's go through them. Uh, to enforce the mandate of wearing mask in public places following the uh, pandemic. To effectively provide a working model for accurate mass detection, to utilize uh, image processing approaches to identify the presence of a mask on a face, to develop an efficient computer vision-based system focused on the real-time automated monitoring of people to detect face masks in public uh, places. Next slide. Oh. Uh, Continue with the literature survey. Hi. Ah, okay. The next part is literature survey. We have uh, we have uh, we have searched or something on I triple papers and other papers. These are the literature parts. Can we go to the next? Can you? Uh, this is the paper and search where we have researched on some papers and we have studied some papers of IEEE, uh, which is face mask detection and recognition by IEEE, and the photographic permissions one by IEEE, and the method system and computer programs for digital images. These are the patent search. This is the overview of our uh, project where in terms of block diagram, uh, block diagram, uh, here are the six major parts where first one is to collect the data and second is to pre-processing pre of the images where we have to, and we will split the data. And, and the fourth is building model and fifth is testing model and sixth is execution. And we'll go into deep into it. The first one is to collect data. We have collected a data set consisting of 3,833 images, which consists of with and without mask for training our module. Uh, by taking the data set, we have first uh, applied, uh, we have first applied the face mask classifier where it, uh, where the images will be converted into, uh, where the images is converted into grayscale and the size of the images will also be converted. And after that, we have split the data into two parts for training and testing purpose. For training, we have split, uh, we have to 80% of data to get the accurate results and for 20% for test or uh, testing purpose. Uh, in the, the next one is building model. The tri for training, first we have built a model First, we have generated, uh, sorry, we have added the module parameters to it, which we need if our training to get uh, in our accurate results. For, and we have saved those parameters to compile the modules. For training of modules, we have used saved data array, which is reshaped and resized. And then we, uh, as I told, we have flipped uh, fitted for training and testing. Then we have created an algorithm which consists of face mask procedure and then train a test module after that save it. And we have saved that. Here, that, uh, if the data is positive, that is with mask, 
it will be generated with uh, green alert and if the data is negative which is without mask it will be with red uh, alert and they will do, do this um, a pop up of the person is not wearing mask in the execution model uh, we have said uh, in execution we have worked on a real time images where the video stream is on live video stream and the a person in front of this uh, uh, this uh, video stream will be captured and his face will be and then we have called a training module where we have saved it and by that uh, the person placing in front of the camera uh, will get to know if there is he is allowed to allowed into princess or not by the green and red zone this is the overview of our project and next Uh, this is another diagram where how we uh, got an output. Um, we have used a camera capture which will tell the mask, and this is the complete overview of the output. Mm. Mm, uh, the future, of course, uh, as we have done with the uh, uh, Attendance system, uh, face mask attendance system with recognition of the name also. And we can use this in future for live video stream, whereas in the class we can use this if the person is not wearing a mask in the live and he will get an alert or pop up. And the technology is growing fast. The attendance system in the schools can be implemented to save the time and for the safety also. And the next will be continued by my uh, colleague Sonali. Thank you for your So here is the detailed design uh, in which we have collect collected data sets which were with mask images and without mask images. Then uh, we have imported the necessary packages such as TensorFlow, Keras, NumPy, OpenCV, Python, SciPy, iMutils, and Matplotlib. Then uh, for training, we have used 80% of our collected data sets and for testing, we have used 20% of data sets. So total images we have taken, that is data sets we have taken for this is uh, 3833. Uh, we, whereas with mask images were 1915 and without mask images were 1918. These are some packages which were required in our project, which was TensorFlow, Keras, IMUTIS, NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, OpenCV, Python. These were some libraries. Now we have uh, we will discuss uh, about the results. Here, uh, first first result is uh, when uh, there is no no one in front of camera, it will detect nothing. And uh, then when person sits in front of camera, mm -hmm. it will detect whether uh, the person is with mask or without mask. In first image, we have seen that uh, there is person with without mask, so there is red mark and uh, the warning is written no mask, no attendance, which has accuracy of 99.9%. .9%. And in second image, uh, we have seen that it has a person with mask, so uh, the green rectangular appears and uh, for uh, proceeding, uh, there is the warning that there is a Point that to place Q for attendance with 99.98% of accuracy. Then uh, here is the attendance system. After placing the Q, we have to register ourselves first and then uh, we can take attendance from it. If uh, we didn't register in it, then uh, it will not uh, show our attendance.
and uh, here we can uh, in this system we can also has so many multiple multiple faces which can be detected which with which is with mask or without mask and uh, we have got the accuracy of 97% and uh, error rate of 8% so next part will be continued by rucha So the conclusion is the model provides a guideline for performing a multi-class classification on whether the face mask is worn properly and the associated category of the mask such as surgical mask, N95 mask, cloth mask, which can be achieved by gathering data sets of different types of mask. The post work focuses on face area and ROI from live video stream or still images to identify that mask has been worn or not by the person. Thus, if a person is not obeying safety measures of wearing a mask in public places, it can be identified and punished accordingly. The system can be used to increase the safety of person in premises and society to minimize the spread of COVID. The future scope of this system will be implementation of system for, twi uh, for twice between as the current detector system is not able to state the similarities between similar faces. This project will make more uh, uh, vigilant towards the safety measures and stop the spread of this virus. And these are the reference we have to, and we have talked about this in our literature survey and the patent search or earlier also. And the next thing. And the social relevance. And this, uh, in this slide, we are going to talk about how it is uh, helpful for the helpful for the society. As as of now, we have faced a lot uh, faced a lot in last two years uh, with the name called COVID. This made us very hard uh, in the time. And by using this project, we can uh, minimize the risk of the COVID in our society and for a society for saving life and all. Thanks and last slide. Thank you so much. I really like this topic. And uh, special about it is, is like multiple image can be scanned. So yes, it's uh, really good. I, I'm just wondering, I didn't understand the future scope correctly. So uh, that I would like to know what exactly you want to say. Okay. In future, uh, we have implemented this uh, this project for attendance system, where the person will sit, uh, will, uh, sorry, will stand in front of a camera and it will capture. But in future scope, we, uh, 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 in future we are thinking and uh, we are thinking to work on a live stream video where the people are sitting in a class. Uh, and working their own perspectives and the teacher is teaching. And the live video should capture the uh, people who are not wearing masks and send them an alert to wear the mask and all. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. I mean, it will save the time and it yes. is easily... Uh, so uh, that means you are going to work on uh, angles. Uh, actually, we have thought to work on angles but as of now, we are a BE uh, completed student, BE graduate student right now. So we have placed in a different company. So firstly, we are uh, focusing on the part we are placed and we are on the training board. So firstly, we have kept it on a hold right now. Yeah, I can understand that. So, uh, but it's yes. really good work. I must say, and it has a scope. Uh, for the improvement and it will uh, it is a kind of futuristic because if you'll work on the angle then it can be implemented on many places but I, I really yes. like the project thank you yes. thank you ma'am for giving thank me the you. opportunity to present it thank you
next paper ameya and pranjal can you please share your screen yes sir So is my screen visible? Yes, please continue. Okay. So good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. So our topic is uh, deep learning based real time malicious network traffic de detection system for cyber physical system. Uh, we both are Pranjal and uh, myself. We both are graduated from Pune Institute of Computer Technology. Currently, we are doing our jobs. So. Um, Coming to our topic, uh, I'll start with the security. What are the security challenges we faced uh, in IoT? So the first is lack of visibility. I'll explain each of them in short. Uh, users often deploy IoT devices without the knowledge of IT departments, which makes it impossible to have an accurate inventory of what needs to be protected and monitored. Second is limited security integration. Because of the variety and scale of IoT devices, Integration them into security system ranges from challenging to impossible. Third is overwhelming data volume. The, this is the amount of data generated by IoT devices makes data oversight management and protect, uh, protecting it is difficult. The fourth is poor testing, which means because of the most IoT de uh, developers do not prioritize security, they fail to monitor effective vulnerabilities, testing to identify what are the weakness in IoT systems? And the last is unpatched vulnerabilities. Many IoT devices have, have unpatched vulnerabilities for many reasons, including patches not being available and difficulties uh, accessing and installing pack, uh, packages. So <clears throat> these are some of the uh, security challenges. And coming to our paper, uh, this is our block diagram. So I'll explain you, uh, explain you how the flow is and my co-author will explain you the model in detail. So the purpose of this paper is to provide an overview of security in the IoT sector and classification of different attacks. In this paper, we have established a way to better analyze DOS attack traffic from selected IoT devices under a local network route in real time using a hybrid deep learning model consisting of a convolutional neural network and a long-term short memory neural network, that is LSTM. Specifically, we use the CIC flow meter tool for collecting features from the real-time traffic, which we intercepted on the node, reduce the feature vector using feature selection algorithms. The feature selection algorithm that we used were random forest algorithm and p-value selection algorithms. The feature extracted from the feature selection algorithm were tested on the deep learning model and the features that gave the best performance of the model were selected. We then in integrated the CIC flow meter tool with our designed model to extract the features from real time and classify the nature of traffic into normal or malicious. The result shows that applying random forest uh, feature uh, selection algorithm leads to increase in accuracy and decrease in latency when classifying the nature of net network traffic. So basically, we build an anomaly-based intrusion detection system that will monitor traffic data and suspicious activity and will classify accordingly taking place in the IoT network. So now my friend, uh, now my co-author, Pranjal, will explain you more about the model. So as you know that we are testing the model for only DOS-specific attack because DOS is the one, DOS is one of the major attacks that takes place on IoT devices and can completely render it uh, unconnected from the benign IPs. And uh, basically DOS attack is classified into three stages. Uh, so first is uh, preparation stage, the attack is prepared. And the second is accumulation stage where the fake data packets or the malicious data packets are accumulating on the IoT devices, thus trafficking the network. And the third is a saturation phase of the DOS attack. In the saturation phase, the device is completely, uh, I mean, unconnected with the benign IPs. It cannot communicate with any network at all. 
so that was a serious uh, problem in the industries where real time I- iot devices are used for transferring the data data and all so uh, our goal was to basically detect the attack at the accumulation phase where uh, device is still able to communicate with the uh, b- benign or other ips and as well as classifying the attack uh, the dos attack at that stage itself so coming to the uh, i mean uh, the flow as am i explain the flow of the uh, project to you so this is the feature selection algorithm uh, by by training the model right so the data set that we used for uh, getting the data is a cic ids 2017 uh, data data set Uh, which consists of 80 statistical features which are collected from the flow information of the network traffic the and the flow information is basically uh, the summary of the session uh, between two ip addresses and the data packets that are exchanged between them so that is the flow and uh, the 80 statistical features which are calculated is are dependent on that flow uh, or the summary of the of that session which are like destination port then source port then we have iit time uh, the size of the packet the size of the payload and and all so such 80 features are calculated but uh, since we are uh, developing this model for iot devices we want uh, the, the model to be lightweight and it should be uh, and it should have low latency thus we we need fast processing time and 80 features are really not convenient if we want to build such if we want to achieve such model so we introduced feature selection algorithm in that uh, which was random and we selected uh, uh, two uh, algorithms one was random forest and one is p value selection algorithm the reason for using random forest is because random forest reduces the overfitting when we are training uh, when we are uh, training the features because uh, a data set is classified a data set is classified into two subsets and those subsets are completely uh, decorrelated decorrelated with each other and since correlation is not there overfitting is reduced and uh, the measure for uh, calculating the feature importance value was gini impurity the and uh, as you can see the histogram for the random forest algorithms we selected a particular threshold and 21 such uh, features were selected from the random forest algorithms and when we use the p value selection algorithm p value selection algorithm basically calculates the correlation between two uh, features and whichever features uh, are maximum uh, are are correlated the the p value for that features are high so if we want to reduce the overfitting we want to reduce the correlation as well so in order to do that the features that are having uh, co- correlation the features that are having uh, that are correlated with uh, with each other one of the feature we can drop and by using this algorithm we selected 43 such features and uh, then we trained our model based on uh, the, the the features that we achieved from random forest and p value selection algorithm uh, so am i next slide next slide so this is the architecture for cnn plus lstm uh, model that we uh, that we have developed so the cnn model is basically one dimensional cnn model the reason for using one dimensional cnn model is because the data that we get from the network tra- traffic is time series data and plus spatial data so it is a combination of both temporal domain and spatial domain as well but since we are only focusing on dos attack time series data has more significance over spatial data uh so wendy uh, wendy cnn basically uh, can analyze both temporal data and spatial data as well now from the architecture as you can see that the filters that we have used in layer 1 of the wendy cnn are 64 and kernel size is kept 3 the kernel size is kept 3 at the initial level because we want to establish some relationship between the features the the feature vectors that are closely related in space in space and in the second layer of the cnn we have kernel size equal to 5 because we want to establish relation relationship between the features which are far related in spatial domain as well the third layer we have the max pooling layer which uh, basically extracts the significant features or significant matrix from the layer 2 and that output we are feeding it to the lstm uh, lstm layer an lstm layer is uh, basically uh, rnn which is capable of analyzing the time series data to, to a greater extent 
where the one state is dependent on the previous state as well. And in while analyzing our uh, DOS traffic, we need that. And then we uh, the, the output of the LSTM layer is spread to dense layer, which only consists of one nodes, which take the decision where whether the attack is benign or malicious. So that's the architecture of CNN plus LSTM. Uh, I'm an expert. And uh, this is the this is the flowchart of how our model works, of how our uh, IDS works in real time. So the model that we developed for experimentation purpose, we deployed it on I, I, we deployed it on Raspberry Pi, which is like the central controller system for all the IoT devices. And ours is the host-based IDS. So we tested our our model on uh, Raspberry Pi, and this is how the flow is. So basically, uh, the tool that we used for capturing the traffic is CIC flow meter. And CIC flow meter, uh, when it captures the data traffic, it generates the statistical features. That is the uh, 80 features that are generated from uh, the CIC flow meter in real time. And But uh, we only need 21 features as uh, uh, earlier I mentioned in random forest algorithm that we extracted only 21 features out of it. And then uh, once the feature extraction is done and feature selection is done, we do we do the data processing over it. Uh, data processing includes data normalization and uh, replacing uh, replacing some of the string values, encoding some of the string uh, string string values uh, using the label encoding and then. And since uh, we are deploying it on the Raspberry Pi, we need the model to be lightweight. And the only way to do to do that is using the TensorFlow. So the feature vector that we are uh, extracting after the data processing is done, we are converting it to the tensor. And that tensor is fed to the CNN plus LSTM model. Now CNN plus LSTM model will classify whether the attack is uh, happening, whether the uh, data traffic that is receiving on Raspberry Pi is malicious or benign. So based on that, it will uh, classify the nature of the traffic. And then once the traffic, once the nature of the traffic is classified, whether the DOS attack is happening or not, it will raise an alert. And the process will continue on, uh, continue in real time. It, it is a loop basically. So this is for the online, I mean in real time. What if we want to, you know, if we have some PCAP file of the data traffic that is already, already generated and we want to save that data and we want to also, uh, detect the nature of that that offline traffic which we have saved for future training purposes so here is the on, uh, offline mode as well the pcap file that we are uh, generating through tcp dump we are feeding it to, to the same uh, it, it is going through the same process again like from here we can see that the uh, read data from pcap files the block uh, the pcap file is then going through feature extraction feature selection data processing converting to tensor uh, Pass tensor, tensor to CNN plus LSTM model, and it uh, recognizes where the attack is happening. Or so our model works both in online and offline mode as well. Uh, so that's it. Come in next slide. And these are the results uh, results of the CNN plus LSTM model that we achieved. So the column number second, which you can see the model one random forest. So the, these model was trained using the features that was extracted from random forest algorithm, which we achieved 21 uh, such features. And the accuracy for uh, that is 0 0.99. Recall is one, zero F1 score is 0 0.99 again, and precision is one. Uh, the, and this is for model two, uh, which we achieved uh, using p-value correlation algorithm. And 43 such features were extracted. Uh, the result for that is 0 0.99. Uh, accuracy recall is 0.96 f1 score is 1 and precision time 0.982 which is approximately close to that of 21 but the processing time is different uh, the processing time for 21 features is 1.18 seconds which proves that the lat latency is reduced for 21 features uh, model and the model 3 is basically training all the features in the cic ids data set which were available uh, and for that, uh, you can see accuracy is reduced. Uh, recall is approximately the same as uh, that of 21. Uh, precision is reduced as compared to 21 and 43 features. And latency is increased, which is 2.139 seconds. Uh, so hence, we prefer the model with 21 features. And th uh, these are the training results that we achieved when we trained the model with 21 features. 
so the first is the accuracy curve as we can see the training and validation uh, curves are pretty much close to each last other last one minute yeah sure uh, the bias is very low for that and from the loss curve it is visible that uh, the variance is very low hence low bias and low variance makes a perfect model which does not overfit uh on my next slide so now um, i will explain the results for 43 and 70 features as we can see the bias is on lower side and the variance is on higher side the uh, model captures noise and slightly overfits the data which is not the ideal case so that's why we did not select at 43 and for the 78 features as the bias and variance values are on higher side of the uh, higher side the model is not an accurate model and that is why we selected uh, 21 and not the 43 and 78 features so that's it uh, we have an actual video uh, for uh, in which we have uh, seen the attack happening place in real time and uh, if you, if you want i can show it uh, after the presentation and um, these are some of the references thank you thank you so much i would like to see the demo okay you... yeah ma'am sure so this is the demonstration we have actually implemented on raspberry pi only and how may we start yeah just a second i will increase the quality so on the right, on the right terminal on the left terminal you can see that the packets we are intercepting and on the right terminal we have our model which will detect uh, the the attack am i uh, start with you i think we can't wait for 8 minutes but if you can show yeah ma'am i'll i'll fast forward it actually i mean we can directly show you uh, the starting phase and we'll skip to the ending phase of the uh, where the attack is detected yeah yeah uh... so so here we have two options online and offline so we are choosing real time first and uh, for data packets i was randomly scrolling through google and on the left as you can see that the data packets are uh, are intercepting and on, and on the right you can see the statistical features which are calculated in real time and decision is taken whether the attack is happening or not so green color uh, indicates that it is benign for first the green uh, yeah so after some time uh, we got to see the dos attack so we uh, for dos attack i mean we uh, attacked our raspberry pi with multiple devices three to four devices using some software and uh, our, our model was capable of recognizing it the red color indicates that the uh, attack is happening and it is recognized so actually we can't see the colors and all but i think okay. that's okay uh, it's really good project uh, so uh, have you like gone through can i see your references i mean is yeah. something similar kind of thing has been done yes yeah so the most similar thing that has been done is the reference number 3 right uh, they have they are using cnn lstm hybrid network but the thing is uh, it is not happening in real time and uh, they are using two dimensional cnn so they are more focusing on the spatial domain but we are more focused on one d cnns uh, we are more focused on temporal domain that's it for ddos attack specifically okay i think it's really good i mean i don't know which industry you work in but uh, i think it's uh, because uh, cyber uh, security is booming and people are looking for the solution And there are so many product industries would like to you know opt for this and iot is one of the uh, what is what you say is the latest booming field next um, so i think it's really good project i really like it yes. and uh, you have so, so of three models which is very important 
um, and uh, I think that uh, that gives the wholesomeness to the paper. So it's really good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you. Stop sharing. Thank you, Pranjal and Amay. Yes. Here we go for the last session, which is offline one. Last paper of the session. The paper title. Feature based intrusion detection system with support vector machine. Hello. Uh, hello, sir. I am Shilpa. Hello. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, sir, Secha, uh, session uh, 2 from uh, 2 p.m. Na? Yes, we will have some uh, delay in that. Maybe 15 minutes. Because my paper ID is 86. Yes. Okay, okay sir. Okay, no problem. So here we will go for the last paper of the session. Yes, sir, please start. Various uh, comparisons are given of different algorithms. So this is the title. The first paper is about key feature recognition algorithm of network intrusion signal based neural network and support vector uh, machine. So actually uh, we selected this NSL KDD in the data set. Then the second is about anomaly based intrusion detection system through feature selection analysis. The third, uh, so various algorithms are used that are compared actually. Then next is performance comparison of SVM, random forest and other uh, learning machine for intrusion detection system. So here algorithm is used SVM. Next. So decision tree, random forest, KNN algorithms are studied for detection of these intrusions genetic programming, uh, fuzzy interference system, then machine learning, ranking. So uh, there are many advantages and disadvantages or limitations we have mentioned in this. So why NSL, KDD and limitations? So because very few publicly available data sets and among them NSL, KDD is considered as a benchmark. So due to privacy issues, data sets used for network traffic analysis are not easily available. So there are uh, limitations also. It does not represent modern day attack structures and methodologies. So some publicly available data set are used, CI, CIDS, Kaspersky data set we have used. This is about uh, data set we have mentioned. So we are referring PCAP file actually. Next. So this is another uh, data set, UNSWNB uh, 15. So it overcomes the limitations of publicly available data set among them NSL KDT. So which uh, covers the modern day attacks basically. So this is the proposed uh, system. So 
here the data is collected and the pre processing is done and various features are applied to it and so in uh, with the help of uh, intrusion detection algorithms the intrusions are detected and the alarm is also given so we are going to show the various data uh, features that we have used okay, next so this is the pca technique can be also used for feature extraction basically next svm is also used we have also compared uh, these models cnn is also used for the purpose next we have used the software tools also that is anaconda python then git argus g control these are the various tools used hardware this is the configuration of hardware mechanism and data set that is nsl kdd even as wnd 15 these are the various software tools libraries used actually so this was done uh, with the students actually because students are not here actually so on the behalf of students we are presenting it actually and the tcp dump mechanism so which collects the data that is a raw data set we applied various tools argos g control and uh, depending on the feature set so we concluded that this is an intrusion detection happen next so tcp dump that is the raw data set data we have collected we have used argus uh, tool to analyze the raw network uh, packets then that is collected by tcp dump actually So this is another tool for uh, analyzing the raw packets. G2. So there are features actually in the next slides. So these are the various uh, features, state, then there are other dewear, that is total duration, S bytes, D bytes, STTL, DTTL, S loss, D loss, service, S load, D load, S packets. So swing, dwin, so that is value of source TCP window advertisement, value of destination TCP, source TCP base sequence number. These are the various features uh, we have collected actually. So various features like jitter, source jitter, destination jitter, start time, last time. Then source inter packet arrival time is also calculated. So these are the various features. These are the additional features that is SCT, SRV, source. There are other features which indicates number of connections containing the same service, number of connections containing same destination address, then source address, then other features, general feature, general purpose features are IP address. That is one of the uh, analysis we have done. CSV file we have taken into consideration actually. Input was uh, log data that is uh, data set and the output is normal or attack so based on the features. So this is detected actually. So this was on the behalf of uh, students actually. <laughs> Yeah, due to some reason. Into the research phase also, and also uh, because there is like every day people are coming up with the new ideas. How can we, uh, you know, uh, attack the system? 
and how can we you know uh, like so adversaries are more smarter than uh, you know the what do you say the uh, the person those who are sa- safeguarding the system and uh, we need these kind of tools which can think like uh, attacker <laughs> so i think uh, uh, yes yes correct so yeah they they are, they are very smart i mean when uh, now i can see in the industry like we are uh, deploying lot of you know uh, the tools uh, uh, we are trying to safeguard our system so they are coming up with the new ideas where uh, they can bypass the tools they can bypass the technology so i think this kind of projects really will uh, help student to build their mindset also when they are going into the industry okay great uh, yeah it's really i mean this is uh, like it's an ever ending field now <laughs> because everything is going live but yeah nice Thank you, ma'am, for uh, joining this session. Uh, with this last presentation, I declare that session has, has ended. We will uh, start uh, session two at two p.m. sharp. Thank you, all participants. Thank you. Thank you.
हेलो हेलो सर आई एम ऑडिबल हेलो सर व्हेन वी स्टार्ट आई डोंट नो व्हेन आई एम वेटिंग एच डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर इंजीनियरिंग एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी College of Engineering, Pune Technological University, a university, uh, a unitary public university of government of Maharashtra, Shivaji Nagar, Pune. He has thirty-two years of teaching experience and has published the books on cryptography and information security, cloud computing and computer graphics. Dr. Pasgare sir has. over 75 research publication in various international journals and conferences his area of research is network security also he is a member of board of studies in computer engineering information technology of a number of autonomous institutes and universities he is a chief investigator for the information security education and awareness icea project ministry of information technology government of india he was a principal investigator for a research project wireless ids sponsored by aict new delhi he delivered lectures on recent and state of the art topics in computer engineering and information technology as an invited speaker so as per the sequence we will go with the first two offline paper presentations so may i call our first paper for the session 2 titled as deep learning best real time malicious network traffic detection system for cyber physical systems and the authors are sorry a uh, secure and supportable application for visually challenged uh, persons and the authors are som swas patil and sachivet let's start with the presentation thank you Uh, we have total fifteen minutes for the presentation, uh, and as a bifurcation, ten minutes are for presentation and five minutes for question answer. So please uh, strictly adhere the timings. हेलो
Hello. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir, audible. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Soham Sohas Patel. This is my co-author, Sergi Vadya. And today we are here to present our topic that is secure and supportable application for a visually challenged person. So, the technical development in today's world have constantly been focused for the betterment of human beings. There is a need for secure and supportive technology for betterment of human beings. According to a recent report of WHO, there are uh, uh, that is dated 14 October 2021. They have cited that there are more than 2.2 billion people around the world that have visual impairment. It becomes a more challenging task for the technicians when the te technology is being modeled for any physically challenged people. Unfortunately, uh, India is homeland to world's leading visually challenged populace. There are also uh, big responsibilities on technicians to prepare a secure, user-friendly, and reliable system. Also, from a technical perspective, there is always a, a challenging task to compromise between parameters such as accuracy, the speed, the cost, reliability, and so on. All these factors together have contributed our motivation to our project. Through this, uh, through this project, we have uh, used the appropriate combination of our algorithm, platform, and coding language to implement a concept that will be effective as an outcome. Representative, representation of information from basics up to the experimentation is helpful in understanding for beginners. We have also made the concept more understandable by providing more simple and clear graphical representation of our steps that are followed. We have also provided a less expensive and a solution to the issues with an appreciable efficiency. As you can see, the vision-based assistive devices are particularly divided into three categories, namely monocular, stereoscopic, and RGBD. In the table, they have been differentiated based on three parameters that are user friendliness, robustness, and the feedback of these three systems. The monocular camera-based systems are almost implemented with smartphones using single camera sensor mounted and capturing videos and process to analyze. The stereo camera contains two or more lenses to be mounted to capture 3D images. Whereas the RGBD camera system takes images with deep knowledge, that is the distance to the sen sensor. The information present and, pro and processing time depends on the type of camera sensor used. 
the proposed system or project uh, is as follows first the acquired image uh, is provided as an input to the optimized and the popular uh, algorithm of open cv that is yolo which stands for you only live once afterwards the image is stored in the database and processed uh, and is processed according to the task which is selected by the user that is either to de uh, detect the objects in the surroundings uh, or to identify a person or to identify a text and so on then the email uh, then the output is converted to text and uh, then analyzed and finally the text is converted to audio which is provided as an output uh, via voice assistant to the user Uh, as discussed, a system based on three main pillars. That is the front end. The front end will be the T Canter app. That is, we will deploy our system on this app. It is easy for GUI application of a Python code. The second main pillar uh, is Python coding and the Open CV. So uh, our main idea behind this research is we get we plan a system and we get every time two solutions for every part. Means first we decided. To use a image classification, so we get across the two libraries. Uh, first is OpenCV, second is TensorFlow. So we have to decide from which we we will select. So we we decided to go with the OpenCV. So just imagine if I say uh, there are a picture of a cat, dog, and a person in the in the image. Our human brain will uh, easily analyze how the picture is. But if we provide the same image to the computer, it is very complicated process to recognize the objects in the images. In simple words, it's nothing but a headache. But uh, open CV, that is open computer vision, open source computer vision makes us easy because it contains 2,500 2, algorithms implemented. So it's easy for us to scan the image, to get the image segmentation, to read the image and to uh, get the writings from the image. That is the pixel wise uh, identification from the image gets easy. So we decided rather going with the TensorFlow, we used open CV in our system. Third main pillar will be the YOLO, that is you only look once. As the name suggests, you have to just give you image scanning just once. We get all four, YOLO is 45 FPS, that is frame per second. So it doesn't require to go uh, to analyze the image for two or three times. Uh, for the YOLO, we came across four, uh, three more algorithms, that is YOLO, SSD, uh, fast RCNN and CNN. But as the you, uh, you only look once is easy, we decided to go with the YOLO. And also YOLO, and more important is, YOLO contains the inbuilt data set, which saves our time for the reading, for getting the data set and downloading, implementing it. And this is the system requirements, which we use for our graduation projects. Uh, but for the real-time deployment, uh, they are different. This is for our system, which we develop. Uh, this is the output, the results. The GUI will be look like this. First, the real time image will be taken from the camera. The image will get stored into our database. When the image will get, get stored in the database, we will name the person in the image. We will name the relation with the person in the image and we will train the model accordingly. When the blind person will have this system or wear a smart glass or system like this, it when the same person comes into the view, the person will get audio reply that is person detected is suppose me. I'm so person detected is Shachi. Hello, a friend. So he will get to know who is communicating. He, he is communicating with whom. Second, we also done with the object detection. Means when the pers blind person is walking, if every some object in come into it, so suppose this is table. So person will get to know that, okay, this is a table with some probability it's, it's table. Uh, then the voice in, we also provided with the voice input that is when the, Im when the texted image is in the picture. So the text will get read it. Uh, this is the this is uh, the database here. We are add, add the name, mobile number, relation, having to get to the this system. Uh, then we train the model accordingly. Uh, this is the output of our object detection, means the output will be the bottle detected. 
uh, and the text which I mentioned earlier, the textual which also represented means if image having four to five paragraphs, the system will read all the four paragraphs for the blind person. Uh, to conclude. To conclude, we we, uh, we try to give something to our society with the with using this system. These are the references which from which we decided for this topic, and we get those algorithms. Thank you. Uh, you only look once because YOLO has 45 FPS. So means in one second, we will get 45 uh, images in just, for, uh, in just a second. So it is beneficial. Means for SSD, there are two convolutions we have to go. In one convolution, YOLO will get all the segmented images. Hence YOLO. And it, mainly it has inbuilt data set. <laughs> What is the accuracy of your model? Uh, our accuracy is almost 80%. But uh, for when, when we presented at the graduation time, we get there very much suggestions for it. So we decided not to give in this. Okay. Uh, now, suppose uh, that data set is sufficient, whatever the data set is available. You know. Yeah for, our, yeah, for our scope, it is sufficient. But for the future scope, we have to use various data set for... But if the data set is available, yeah. then what is your main contribution in this work? Because you have just captured the image. Yeah. Okay? So, training is automatically happened there. So we coded now. We coded the training. For, for, for what? For what? Your, your coding is there. Uh, I didn't get your question. Because the scope, all this... Algorithms are available, yeah. code and all those things. Yeah. What is the coding part from your side? Okay, in first we take real time images. So then they get stored, then it, we train the model, then the object we get detected, the object which are not in the data set, there are two to three objects. So we try to give that object to the system. So see here, training and all those part coding, already code is available for these systems. Or not. So, an inbuilt data set is also available. Yeah. Okay. So, training is happened automatically. But, sir, we are giving three uh, types of training in the same system. It's for the face recognition, face detection, person recognition, object detection. And also, we have given the audible output so that the blind person can hear. So, is such type of systems are available? Uh, presently, we didn't. Uh, research you have you really search yeah, from course. the literature yeah. whether such type of scheme is available or not? We search for the algorithms which we can use and which will have, which are good for our scope. No, yes, no. I'm not asking about the algorithm. Major people work for such type of problems. No, so Definitely the data set is available, already available such yeah. type of data set. And already but, sir, we exactly don't know which device and which uh, is, we can use it in a mobile phone, we can have smart glasses. Hmm. So we didn't come across such types of things. But we have read about the smart glasses. Okay. So maybe they are beneficial. But still, there are uh, problems of database storage because a yeah. person came across lots of people in every day. So, and similarity between the objects. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the main, mainly you, because, sorry, sorry. So, your answer for the question YOLO, because YOLO can detect the person's uh, person in the low light also. The image is taken mm. in the less light. Then still, YOLO can detect and give almost accurate answer. But for the SSD, it's not good. It means if image is small, if image is uh, distorted, so it's not possible. For it. So you have not done any image processing things here? Yeah. Whatever the image you capture, yeah. how you process it? What are the different techniques used for image processing? Processing of the image. Pre-processing is one. Yeah, we, clean, we use some cleaning techniques too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? No. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you. So, second paper, uh, which is also offline. Uh, thank you.
the paper title is uh, lightweight auditable secure cloud storage with privacy enabled data storage optimization Is this open? Yeah. Could you please open this one? This one? Yeah, it's open, sir. Which one? This one. Yeah. Now it's okay. Now, fine, sir. Good afternoon respected expert participant audience i am subhash ratod research scholar at santa garge baba amravati university maharashtra india i am presenting my research work under the guidance of dr k s varse dr aryan khobragade and colleague sushma pawar The title of my research, Lightweight Audible Secure Cloud Storage with Privacy Enable Data Storage Optimization. This is my outline of my presentation. As every organization migrate into the cloud computing because of some advantages of cloud computing like storage cost, cost minimization, and on-demand sharing. As I said, every business is migrating. Ultimately, at there is certain challenges. Challenges are store hoarded and security, confidentiality, authentication, and privacy. So these challenges I have addressed in my research. This is a problem statement to achieve a cost efficient data storage while maintaining data privacy and security over public cloud. Objective of my research in very start, as I said, advancement is storage over a reduction. As in first step or in first phase, I have concentrating the work on the image and hence to make the secure image storage, secure image sharing, authorization of store image acquisition. Objective of my research work is data splitting and generating the chunk, generating a file that is log file, which is keep the record of the chunk, encrypting that file and maintaining the data access control and minimization of storage cost with data compression technique. I have made literature survey and notably I have added here certain, some of the paper for the, as I find certain gap in that. So these are the gaps I have find in relevant of methodology used in this paper. Top five paper I have concern here for the gap analysis. And the relevance is that how the methodology use public auditing, privacy preserving, data integrity, confidentiality, and communication cost of the image. Notably, I have stated two systems where 
some of the issues has been addressed, but in this identity-based PDP protocol, the integrity of data has not been checked. In second system, the system has been made for the doctor where it is for the group of people, not for the public. Taking in the consideration of the gap analysis, this is a proposed system that I have made. So in my research, there is two entity I have considered and third is TPA. One is owner and second is a user. So I will, I'm explaining the architecture, how it is to be proceed. Suppose once image, suppose there is owner and who upload the images. Normally nowadays, one image has been put on the cloud openly and if somebody access it and tamper it, then there is a compromising of the system. So what I have done here, I, before once the image has been uploaded or before image uploading, the image has been compressed. After compression, the image has been divided into different chunk. And the chunk is has been kept in the log file, which is put along with the original image on the cloud. On the user side, while do downloading, once the request has been received to the owner, the request will be approved by third party. Once it is approved and authenticated by authenticated user, then that image will be get to the user, but on the user side, the various chunk has been collected from the log file. And the, we, uh, so we have designed the two algorithm. One is a file, dis, uh, file divider or file splitter. And second is a file joiner. According to, as log file is already encrypted. So file is decrypted from this user side. And by using the joining algorithm, file will be joined and the original file will get it. In the middle of that, third party auditor has been kept, who is responsible for validating the response and the delegation. For example, the image has been pl placed on the cloud and that at the same time that is kept in the uh, storage of the cloud, the digital signature of the same image, which is created with the public key of the owner, with the private key of the owner and which is decreed, which is uh, the signature is verified with the public key of the owner. So public key, for the public key uh, generation, I have used the RSA with the timestamp. This timestamp has been added in that. For the encryption of the data, I have used the AES as it is lightweight. And for data compression, I have used the DCT with the column factor so that the we can set the certain threshold and according to threshold, we can compress the image. So these are the things which I explained and the entity which are involved in the, that, that is cloud service provider, secure key generation and distribution. There is a data owner, third party TPA, that is auditor, data user. How actually the process has been happened from since from uploading to the, uh, get the data on the user side, how it is to be later. This is actually a process. Like uh, image upload, converting color, color image to the grayscale image, then dividing to into different pics, uh, right, uh, chunk, then compression of the image, then contraction on the, on the other side, Whatever the image has been compressed after compression of the image, the image divided into different chunk as it is equal size. It is a filter algorithm. So if the image is 100 KB, then it is divided into equal. That is a, a 10 chunk. If suppose we can change the values also, but as is a as a thumb rule, we have said that key. If the image that means whatever the block of the image, which can be divided into equal size. That is that is the things only. And once it is divided, it is kept in the log file and ordering of the chunk. Which is, which is placed across the different server in the cloud, right? While joining, it will be collected and it will be joined. So I use right data fragmentation for log encryption. That is, these are the algorithm that I use. From the download side, that is that I already explained. Data fragmentation on the reverse side, whatever the whatever the process I have done on the owner side, that will be reversible on the user side. Yes. 
so i have calculated uh, that is average uh, cost calculation of this particular image while uh, transferring the image or uh, right it is, it is for the analysis purpose that i have made request how much time is required for the request storage cost that is parameter that i use for the calculating the average storage cost as a part of presentation the mathematical base of it whatever the mathematics involved in that is a mathematical modeling i had added in the presentation mathematical modeling has been done with the help of set theory and the state diagrams this is actually the state of how it is to be proceed since from uploading to the downloading of the image and these are the process has been happening for the result analysis i have considered the for the analysis purpose i have taken the image different image size how it is to be compressed with the help of dct with the quality time factor and time required to compress it again it is original size how it is to be compressed with the lower density time stamp required for the image fragmentation this is a and on the side construction and uh, uh, the construction reconstruction of the image that how much time is required that is has been considered second i have considered quality factors for the image for and peak signal to noise has been calculated as it is a inversely proportional to the quality of the image which should not be a degrade and threshold has been set at 20 20 decibel i have made the result analysis with comparison of the already already earlier algorithms taking the number of image in first page five image then increase to 10 image like this and how it is to, how much time is required for this computation of that uh, for compression of the image that is calculated for processing in short in processing as a conclusion of my work i here uh, want to conclude that ki whatever the image which were going to be placed on the cloud it should be kept in secure ways and i have contributed here like i have designed two algorithm for splitting and the joining we earlier density is there density which you use with the quality factors that is frequency values also we have used rsa with the time stamping so these are the references which i studied during my research so with this i am try to come to your certain levels if some suggestion i am happy to happy to accept it i am very much thankful to experts and organizing team thank you sir when you compress it is some data is missing okay and after compression you divide it yes sir there is encrypted all those things so while decompression yes so because you are applying encryption and all those things okay so what about the missing data this is very step sir because you compress the things yes while decompression because you after after compression you again divide this into different yeah. chunks and then encrypt it and then again reverse thing at the other end so this is the i use uh, it is a lossless uh, decompression but when yeah. some bits yeah. size is ready to that is something so, is something missing. so how you can handle this problem i do not address your uh, then uh, one more thing uh, i observe uh, you have use fragmentation yes when we store the data in fragmentation yes. after during deep fragmentation yes. the sequence is change what is the mechanism you have use I so that you can get the correct sequence of data of course yeah. sir when well, uh, fragmentation check has been divided so each chunk have the id each chunk have the id okay has an automatic hmm. without id you can consider it ah, okay. uh, etc hmm. sure so if that is when this happened before storing on the cloud yes so while storing if some chunk yeah. is missing i will not be getting it is already it is rejected sir you are not getting on the reverse side how yeah because see here while storing on the cloud before storing it is happen on this your machine or on the cloud yes on the where on, on the, the cloud. cloud only divide compression everything is yes, happen yes. on the cloud yes sir 
Okay. Now, if suppose uh, that is some basically, then if it is happen in the cloud, then there is yeah. no question of missing of the yes. things. Okay. And you are using AES also. You mentioned yes, sir. Uh, which AES? Advanced Information Standard 128. 128 yes, bit. Okay. Uh, so it is ready made yes, whatever sir. they available you have used yes, as it is. Yes, sir. Okay. Now what about the key? Because it is symmetric encryption. Yeah, sir. RSA I have used it. It is time stepping for the key generation. For uh, key generation of for the order and the uh, for the order? No, no, no. I am asking about uh -huh. for AES. Uh -huh. Whatever the key is there, uh -huh. it is generated by RSA algorithm. Yes. Using RSA algorithm. Yes. Okay. For RSA algorithm, what is the prerequisite? Input is right, that will be uh, input is uh, yeah, bit values because, yeah, see, key generation, yeah, RSA is not the key generation algorithm, sir. From that, okay, I will tell you, sir. Uh, from the user information, mm -hmm. uh, we take the user information from them, mm -hmm. and for the right as the input, we have the different parameters, uh, right, uh, like a uh, yeah, while uh, uh, other registration, right? Mm -hmm. For other registration, maybe uh, we are decided to take uh, some uh, 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 identity of the user, right? On that, the key has been to be generated. But then yeah. identity of the user is every yeah. time remains same. That means same key generated every time. Uh, no, sir. It is uh, right. Okay. Suppose one user, one, uh, yeah. I am yes. the person, yes, yes. I am uploading something. Yes. My uh, ID remains the same. Order, what order. are the information? Exactly, exactly, so sir. for first file, the same. I want to store ten files. Yes. So all files having the same, then uh, same key generated. Sir, yeah, something like I say SMP RSA with a time stamp. No, no. See, don't confuse. Yes. Sir. Uh, AES required the key. Exactly. That key is generated from which place? See how it is so used. So talking about the private key, public key, for digital signature. No, no, I'm not asking. I am asking about the key selection for AES. AES is used for encryption. Right. It is not generated the key. Right. Whatever the key you have suggested, yes, yes. it can securely transfer from one place to another place using RSA. Yes. I may agree with you. Yes, yes, yes. But how the key, which data? RSA is for encryption yes. of some data. Some data, some data yes. means here key. Key, exactly. That key is generated from where? From where? For RSA? For AES. For AES. For user information, sir. From user information. But then it remains same because user information is always same. Yes. It is same, sir. Your thought. Yeah, this is same, sir. It, it should same. not be same. Then, then if it is remains same, right. then... Uh, Security compromises? If, uh, of course. Because if it remains same, once someone get your key, he, whatever the files you have stored, 100 of files, automatically there is no security. Then. Once, sometimes the key is secure. And RS, you can send it with RSA, that is different. Yes. Okay. Yes. And RSA having also some different problems. Yes, yes. It yes. is not the full fledged algorithm. Right. What is the key size you use for RSA? RSA? Huh? Key size. Size of the key. For your application. But hmm? 1024 is not secure for us. Yeah, exactly. 1024. Is not secure. You can select any number of uh, any size right. for our system. So you have to put these things. Uh, then you mention about uh, hashing. Uh, uh, that is uh, digital signature. And in digital signature, for what purpose you have how you can compute the digital signature? How it is convert digital signature? Right? Yeah. Uh, a particular user information. You also use the ready yeah. algorithm for this? Yes. With the signature. Digital yes. signature. Yes. Right. Okay. So on which information the user digital information? Sir. Hmm? Digital signature, user information. Yeah. The as like, let's see, right? How it is to be like user info, right? On the right, user signature when connecting. Uh, Yes, sir. Then there is measure digest. Right, MD5. MD5 or HD? Yeah, that is not right. You have to compute the hash value uh, in digital signature. Do you aware about the practical approach any times you use this digital signature of your friends or somewhere? <coughs> 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 
use uh, I, I use it for better than it is for better than I use it created it. I use it simple. How how you can compute the digital signature? Uh, from uh, so the digital is computed from the other user information. For this data, suppose I want to compute yeah. this complete file, we have to consider for hashing. Exactly. So that's yes, why yes, whatever your data, uh, not your personal data, yes, I am not asking. Yes, yes. Whatever the data from that data that this is signature yes, yes, yes. That is the hash value is considered from this. Yes, yes. And then only it can be. Hmm? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will take your suggestions and I'll try it. Thank you. Thank you. So yes. how much year you have completed for this? Sir, two years. Two years. Two year. Yes. Uh, okay, we will go for the next paper uh, presentation. Uh, the paper title is Deep uh, Fake Video Detection Using Neural Networks. Yes, all the papers Hello. now for this one also. Hello, I'm audible. Yes, you're audible. You can uh, please share your screen. Okay, thank you. screen is it in the presentation mode it is visible yes please start continue so good afternoon and uh, good afternoon everyone i am amana sati first of all i want to thank uh, it Pali committee for giving us the chance to present our research paper and so uh, the topic of our research uh, is uh, the fake video detection using neural networks and uh, this paper is presented by aman mayur salesh lalit and uh, from uh, a uh, department of computer technology, Yashwantra Chow College of Engineering, Nagpur. So this is a uh, table of content for the presentation. The problem statement is uh, to design and develop a, a deep learning algorithm to classify the video as deep fake or pristine. So over the uh, past few years, free mobile uh, application tools on AI and deep learning uh, made it easy to create uh, the reliable face uh, exchanges in the video. These uh, face exchanges videos are called as defects. So uh, this video, they leave a very little hint of traces to check if it's fake, like it's not uh, really very correct to uh, so they can't be seen from the naked eye. So creating a computerized edited video has uh, has been demonstrated for a quite long time by actually taking advantage of enhanced visual effects. So uh, DeepFake uh, is a technique for human image synthesis based on artificial intelligence. And uh, this purported AI engineered uh, like media are normally, uh, this making a, a DeepFake with a compressed AI tool is very simple job. Uh, here we can see uh, a video uh, in the left side it is original and right one is the defect of uh, the original video. So the abstract is uh, to we have to we we were able to develop a web app which will provide an interface for the detection of video defects using uh, deep learning techniques. So the intent to use of this application to detect the fake videos. So these synthetic and manipulated images uh, can be used for some malicious and such purposes that can prove to be harmful for the society as it may violate security systems, privacy, and the social trust. So the objective of our project is uh, to build a face detection system so uh, so that any new user a uh, new user who doesn't know how to what videos are this is it real or fake any new even a toddler can uh, just it upload it uh, on uh, the web app so the system uh, will be like uh, to we have to upload uh, we have to upload an input and it will show the percentage accuracy of the input to be if it's a and we have developed uh, this way that using Django uh, on which the robust machine learning model will be deployed to Django. So we have used uh, 
and deep learning algorithm inception refinet v2 so inception refinet v2 is actually based on a cnn which is trained on more than some million of images from the yeah, image net database and inception refinet has a different filters and size for each individual block and increasingly increasing cardinality lead to better result while keeping architecture complexity and in inception refinet uh, network uh, here we had used it for the feature extraction uh, in contrast with different algorithm as a cnn joins the qualities of the inception and uh, refinet models where the inception model integrates uh, equal componentally and uh, extraction into its this deep engineering here are a uh, few uh, i triple patterns uh, which uh, which helped us during our research so data gathering is the most crucial and important part of any machine learning model so we have gathered data from these trusted sources uh, like there were some online defect detection challenges were going on and uh, those were held on kaggle so uh, the total data set consists of real and fake manipulated some 6000 videos there were directory for the fake and real but all of them were not uh, really good for our model so we had to uh, a lot of uh, like uh, we had to see if they are good for our model or not so we have uh, done it from all these uh, above sources so mayur you may proceed with the further slide okay so uh, good afternoon everyone uh, in the data installation section uh, we have performed eda uh, which is exploratory data analysis on the training and testing data after that uh, we are checking the files type uh, which are focusing on the metadata files uh, where we have kept uh, the the jsons of uh, a video which have the metadata and then after uh, we will proceed to the video and uh, we are focusing on exploring the fake videos uh, and after that we are focusing on the real videos to extract the face uh, from the videos uh, we have used we have used open cv module so this uh, this covers covers us the data exploration part so uh, why we choose inception reset to model uh, so uh, from all the mentioned algorithm uh, inception reset v2 has a top one and top five accuracy greater than the rest as you can see in the image and also the topological depth of 572 uh, which helps the uh, algorithm to get higher accuracy so uh, this is the prediction workflow uh, in prediction workflow uh, user will upload a video which will goes to the pre processing unit and then train model will process the video on the learning parameter such as the uh, uh, learning rate and uh, etc and the output will be based on the that learning parameter so inception refinet is a so inception refinet is a convolutional neural network uh, that is trained on more than 1 million image from image net data set the network is uh, 164 layers deep and classify images in 100 objects so uh, as you can see in the image the the deep fake detection takes the parameters such as inconsistent eye blinking mismatched earrings and some features which lacks the definition Uh, as a lip alignment and uh, ear alignment so uh, in the pre processing part uh, the videos are pre processed and all the unrequired noises such as noise uh, and uh, any uh, any frame which is not uh, covered by face is removed and video is only required portion of that video is uh, detected and cropped in first step of pre processing of the video a uh, video is split into frames and that frame is uh, detected and uh, cropped along the face this process is followed for each video in the data set uh, two and, minutes okay yeah hello hello should, should i continue yes yes continue but last two minutes okay 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 yes 
So this is the pre-processing part where we are saving the cropped images. So these are some uh, accuracies that we have got uh, in our in the different data sets, uh, which is around uh, 85 to 90 percent, uh, which uh, comes out to be a great accuracy for any uh, algorithm. This is the scope of work that we have built a, a deep fake uh, using deep learning technique and uh, which will help a uh, community to detect the threatened malicious deep fakes and make this world a better place to live. We have also have a live demo. Uh, if you, if a, uh, if committee member assist, uh, we can show you that as a time, as we have, don't have much time. Uh, please uh, skip that. Okay. okay. So uh, the conclusion is that uh, we have presented the neural base approach to classify a video as a fake or real along the confidence proposed model and uh, the ResNet uh, V2 uh, CNN, which helps that uh, the video is real and based on the listed parameters in the paper, we believe that it is provide a very high accuracy on real-time data. References that we have used along the way. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. What is the accuracy of your uh, work? Uh, sir, uh, it is about 85 to 90 percent. You not mention anywhere. Uh, uh, sir, I have just mentioned in the previous slide. In, uh, Here. in this slide, sir. What is this oh. 20, 60 sequence length? Yeah, this is the sequence length. Sir. 90, second is 95 point T. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all these models are uh, examined by you? Models? Uh, uh, yes, sir. We have uh, trained this model uh, in Kaggle uh, because uh, the data which we have used is a lot of data, uh, which is around 6,000 videos. So in Kaggle, sir, uh, it is uh, already given that we can use their GPU and CPU to uh, uh, to uh, execute the models. Okay. Can so you, we have. Can yeah. you explain why the accuracy is 95.22? Second case, hmm? model 95. Okay, okay. Why? Sir, why? As, Okay, uh, sir, as you can see, uh, while pre-processing, uh, we are using the 10 second video. Uh, if you know that, uh, if you if we use the high length video, it is not, uh, it is not considered to be uh, a friendly for, you know, our system that it will process that much of uh, video. So we have used just 10 second video at 30 frames, which will give us the sequence length of 20 or 40. So that we have, that's why uh, if the sequence length is 20, so the crop face will have, we will have 20 crop faces. That means uh, the result improvement can be done by reducing but, time. Yes, yes. And by increasing the that's sequence the length, sir. Only that is the reason. Then why you are not use five second uh, frame? So because uh, it will not give us the uh, fr uh, uh, frames no, of the video, uh, which then will not get. You mentioned yeah. 10 second. Okay. Okay. Yeah. For better results. Yeah, yes. So you may get, uh, if you use the less seconds. Okay. Time period is reduced. Then you can get the, again, more better accuracy. Hello, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, okay. we are uh, using more sequence length. Like the more number of images will be there in the input side, then the model will get more images to, be, uh, to train on it. Like... Uh, then because it will it will be more accurate. In so your the, architecture, you mention only the training page. No testing page you mentioned there. Whatever the results, detection, that is fake or real, you mention only the training from the training result. Yeah. So I uh, surprised. What is your basic contribution? Because your data set is already available. You have taken the actual data set available. We have done yeah. like, uh, some pre-processing also there, like uh, all of, like all of it were not uh, some some of them missing and some were corrupted. What is and the lots of videos? How you can know that the image is corrupted or not? No, that video is cause that video is not playing. Uh, video, how it is not playing well? That means it is corrupted. This is your logic. Yeah, I try to understand your logic. Okay. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So, sir, I, I, I don't get your questions. Can you repeat, sir? So, what is the pre-processing steps you have done? 
Hello. Okay. Okay. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. What are the pre-processing step? You mentioned pre-processing of the videos. Yeah, what yeah. What exactly pre-processing means? So pre-processing means uh, we have a video uh, which will uh, have you know the person face. So to detect that face, sir, uh, in pre-processing part, we have used OpenCV library in Python for detecting that, uh, detecting the face, and cropping that face uh, using TensorFlow library, which is also in the uh, Python uh, packages. And from that, we have uh, uh, you know gathering the data in frames and storing it uh, in the array. As you know, as the image is uh, in the form of array, so we are storing it in the form of array in the what database. Is, what is the size of the array? Uh, so the size of image is one twenty eight by one twenty eight. In the array. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, have you compared your work with the existing work? Uh, sir, actually we haven't compared it right now, but we have checked the other algorithm performance. Uh, but we haven't, uh, you know, included included the other algorithms uh, in our approach. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any questions from audience? Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your time. Sir. Thank you. You can uh, stop sharing your screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, before proceeding for the next presentation, I request all the authors, if possible, please uh, turn on your camera while presentation. Uh, we will go for the next presentation. Uh, the paper title is Integrating Comparison of Malware Detection Classification Using LGBM and XGB Machine Learning Algorithm. Oh, yes, sir. give me a second. I'll just share my screen. Yes, please share. Uh, is this visible? Hello? Yes, visible, visible. Uh, just give me a second. Um, Is it visible now? Uh, please share your screen. Uh, now, visible. now visible, please continue. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, good morning to everyone present here. I'm Avok Sokla. I'm currently a student of VIT. And uh, so this is our paper on basically malware reduction where we worked on an algorithm which is an ensemble of two popular deep learning models, basically LGBM and XGB. And uh, so I'm going to be talking about this right now. So coming to the abstract, which can also be understood as a motivation in short, uh, in today's age of internet and softwares and whatnot, uh, security is very important. So for example, I'm browsing the internet and I find some sort of a file that I want to download so there's a very good chance if I'm not downloading it through the right means, it's most likely going to be corrupted with some sort of virus or malware, for example, Trojan, Worm, uh, Bomb, et cetera. So it's very important that uh, we secure our files and our systems because if we take this slightly, it can be pretty, the consequences can be pretty severe. So what we do is we, first we did a comprehensive study on different methods that could have been used in this uh, in this aspect. And we found two models to be performing really well for our cause. That is the LGBM, the light gradient boosting machine, and XGB, extreme gradient boosting classifier. So these both together are some of the top performers. And the good part about this is that LGBM is a little lightweight. And I think uh, you would know that LGBM is created by Microsoft. It's got, it's got this single layer. And it performs very well on even small data sets and compute and to train it, it doesn't take much time. Uh, coming to XGB, XGB is one of the best classifiers, if not the best on tabular data. And even in our literature survey, as well as if you would just check it up on internet right now, XGB currently is the best for tabular data classification. 
uh, and obviously XGB works on uh, backend decision trees and it, there's a lot behind it. Uh, yeah, so basically, <clears throat> I'll just go ahead. So how we train our model, uh, how, how, how we came up with the formulation of training the model is, first we finalized two data sets, uh, I mean multiple data sets. And those data sets contain, contain information on malware files and Brian files, where malware files are the viruses. Uh, and so before we even started uh, training our model, we first sat down and decided to like, go through it once. So why we chose to use LGBM will be clear in this part of the stage. Because uh, in static analysis, I just have, you just have a normal tabular CSV file with you. You go through the different columns. I'll come to, come to it in a second what the columns are. So you go through the columns, you see what are the different kind of param input feature parameters and stuff. And based on that, you get your output. So when it comes to dynamic, the thing is, it's, it's supposed to happen real time. And so in this particular case, we need something that is that can train quick as well as be implemented quick. So LGBM came exactly in use in this particular part. With the moment I feed in a new feature, I can get a response in about 0 0.2 seconds, which is it's slow compared to what real it should be. But in terms of research, it it um it gives a new direction. And also I'm operating on a computer which doesn't have much GPU and CPU anyway. So once we got our data set and we have done the cleaning and stuff, we then move to the uh, feature engineering. So we do feature engineering isolation. So we then we do, we basically did a correlation heat map between the classes, which is benign and malware and the different columns. And we saw that for different kind of uh, permissions and stuff, what, 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 what is, what's more likely to be benign, which asks a particular permission. For example, some of them, when you download it, you would see, see that they ask for permission to your camera, your phone, and they would ask permission to basically work over other apps, if you would see. And those are just one of the 183 columns that are there. Uh, I'll talk about other columns as well. So then based on this data, which also has a label given subsequently to it, and also all the text in this, which was there as a feature have been embedded using standard embedding techniques. We train our malware classifier. So one thing to note is the LGBM and XGB are trained as an ensemble, but parallelly. So we use a pipelining concept to train it parallelly. And at particular points, whichever is more dominant gives more, uh, which it basically rises up to give the output for that particular section. And then, yeah, then we test it on whatever we have a train test split, we, we test, test it on that. I'll come to the accuracy later. Okay, so these are the standard uh, standard pr procedure you do for any data set. You basically remove the outliers, the skew points, you fix all the null values with you know the, the drop NA, and you check, you check for uh, obsolete or wrong data types and you fix them. And particular rows you may even have to remove. Fortunately, we didn't have to do that, even though we combine multiple data sets to increase our sample size. And for feature embedding, we you, we could we just use the normal uh, tokenizer. One could use something like a bot tokenizer or uh, a GPD GPD two tokenizer, whatever. But we just use whatever normal was there from the NL, NLTK uh, <clears throat> module, and then we ensure to. Uh, completely isolate the categorical data. That is, if the data had classes, which it didn't, then that would get a, a appropriate labeling as one, two, three, and so on. And for us, we only did binary classification into benign and what do you say, uh, malignant. Then we did a normal train test split. Feature scaling was not much use to us because we already had our inputs as binary because uh, it, zero and one corresponds to true and false as to does this particular app, let's say app, uh, let's give it a name, computer test. Does the app computer test ask for yeah, your, this particular Android permission or something else? Or does it ask for a boot permission or, or if it's asking for any particular permission? So that's a true or false for that. So zero and one doesn't need feature scaling so that we haven't done. Right, so now for the implementation, <coughs> as I said, we're, we're, we're implementing it as an ensemble. And we even tried implementing the whole thing on IBM Watson to get a proper visualization as well. And I'll show it you in the next slide. Uh, so then we have our model training. And as I said, so there are basically eight pipelines and there are many, many, many feature vectors before it. And we're basically using only two algorithms. That's your XGB and the other one is your uh, LGBM. So there are four pipelines corresponding to your XGB and four, to, four for LGBM. So that's basically, that explains how the parallel computing happens. 
uh, just just to make it to elucidate a bit on my computer i have an rtx 3060 uh, so that's what i use i basically uh, made it, ran it on cuda and so so if you benchmarking the computation time wasn't really possible because uh, it depends from testing to testing if someone's using a super computer then you can't benchmark that against an, an, a laptop 3060 but anyway just to compare between in the intra comparison of xgb and lgbm uh, we saw that the lgbm is around 3 to 5 times faster than the xgb and that's why that's that's even more uh, you know it's it explains as to why it works in a dynamic case and even on smaller data sets lgbm works well i think in the first slide i mentioned there are about 1200 entries only even after aggregating multiple sources of data uh, that's mainly because we have a huge number of columns and corresponding to that many number of columns, we don't have enough row entries. So that's why LGBM would work better in this case, even though standardly you can expect an XGB to always outperform any other model. Yeah, motivation basically uh, I explained in the first slide. So yeah, coming to the loss, uh, when while while training, while uh, creating the model structure, generally what I've well, from what we found from our uh, survey is that most models use binary uh, cross entropy loss, that kind of function. But we found log loss function to be to give us slightly more significant results in our case. Uh, when we, uh, we we contemplated about it, we thought it's probably because of the exceedingly high number of input vectors, uh, input features. Uh, like for example, uh, we have we, just to give side two examples on Kaggle. There's an Android malware data set which has about 183 columns, and 183 is is uh, all those columns are corresponding to some sort of Android permission. And the total number of columns, the total number of rows is about 500. So for around 200 columns, if you have 500 rows, that doesn't really, that's not really good because you would need at least 10 to 20 times the number of uh, rows for columns to have a proper fit. Never mind. Uh, I mean, even then we Last saw that the LGBO performed well. For the presentation, Amok. Yes, sir. Just one second. Yeah. So we ex implemented X, uh, XGB uh, the following way, and I've explained it before. So in IBM Watson, when you take a visualization, you see, as I mentioned, there are four pipelines and there are way many more features above it. And they correspond to two top algorithms. So you can have, you will have the rank of the pipelines as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, where one, two, four is your LGBM and uh, five, six, seven, eight is your XGB pipelines. Yeah. So uh, for one to four, as I mentioned, which is LGBM, we got an average score of 92.3%. Uh, this is again, one thing should be noted is that we, even after combining much data, we had way less data, uh, as compared to the number of input feature vectors. So for, for something like that, the LGBM have performed very well. And the training time, which isn't mentioned here is something on the scale of about five times faster than your XGB. And also on this particular use case, it's performed, it's accuracy is even su surpassed XGB just by a little bit. And that's only to blame on the size of the data that we had, uh, coming to XGB. So we isolated XGB on uh, seven to six, uh, seven to eight, and five and six, and we found that the seven to eight has around ninety one point six, and the accuracy on the five and six is around ninety two percent. When you combine the whole model as a whole, it kind of works as an ensemble, uh, you can say aggregation, and we're expecting when we get an accuracy of anything around ninety two to ninety four, that kind of a thing. After we add some noise to the data and check. Uh, and I think it's for particular use case, it's what matters and the train test size and stuff, but we get around 93 on a good, uh, on a good run basically. So that's, that's from our part. And if I come to the contributions and you can say, what are we adding to this domain? Firstly, parallel computing is what I would like to add. We are using pipelining for XGB and LGBM. Uh, XGB is the state of the art deep learning model in this current aspect and LGBM is a top model from Microsoft, which is needless to say is very credible in this particular thing. Uh, our LGBM model also takes into account the computation speed, which is something that is very important in this aspect in real time. And XGB, if we have more data, can we can expect accuracy of even above 95%. Okay. So, Thank you. Your time Thank is you, over. Sir. Hello. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. What are the different type of malwares are there? So we have Trojan horses, worms, bombs, then ransomware, uh, spyware. So these, these are different kind of uh, malware that we get usually. In your data set, 
how many number of labels are there it is labeled data uh yes so so one data set is labeled and it has eight classes uh, unfortunately the data set doesn't mention what are what is the virus but it actually has a class label to it like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and where the virus is exactly located in a packet uh yes yeah, so, so just to uh, explain uh, like i understand the question uh, because in real life scenario we can't we need to first find it but our data set deals more with when you install a particular app what kind of permissions re- Sorry, and requests Sorry. just a minute do you understand what is packet uh pack uh, pack the package is basically uh, packet is not package packet uh packet Net- as in computer network the data is sent through packets yeah yeah understood i understood okay. yeah in the yeah. packets there are different fields yes sir so uh-huh. where exactly the malware is located uh sir i think the ma- the malware will be located in the in, within, within the data part of it the data bits most likely in the da- in the data bits like you have network bits and the data bits so i think within the data bits in the packet data bits like is a some field is there do you learn about the packets uh yes sir i have learned about packets in computer networks ha ah, then uh, in, in there is data bits like uh, field is there uh sir i i remember that when we have like class class a class b then there are some network bits and then there are uh, there is a there are there are bits corresponding to what is being sent the data part of it what are the different fields of the packets you know uh, one is the see here all this problem your problem statement is related to packets sir actually our problem statement is uh, we are only considering apps while being installed right now like over the internet so this is particular to that but, but when I'm, you, I'm also... so when you are talking about malware you just know what where exactly malware is come from and how uh, yes sir i agree it's it's important to know where it's coming from and where it's hidden but we are tackling this issue during run implementation time it, it may be difficult for us to know exactly where it's located but when the when something is being installed in your system at one particular time it's going to ask you different permissions and access to this and that during that time we will classify it as suspicious or not suspicious that so, is what we are aiming for so my question is there are antivirus softwares are there yes sir so have you compare your detection rate with the antivirus software any antivirus software uh so in our study we in our literature survey we haven't taken any uh, particular company's model how we have considered other implementations that have been done on similar data sets but we're not taking kaspersky or not in that kind we're not in that kind of a thing because even if we do take that if our data doesn't match then the comparison would be uh, it would not really make much sense because benchmarking is done on similar data so so while doing the malware do we, what is the accuracy of the people have state of art uh, literature survey what is the accuracy sir it's it's about 90 it's about 92 or uh, 92 93% i am not asking about the accuracy of your work i am asking the accuracy of the current researchers uh they are, they are having 98% accuracy also 98 99 like that way already yes, already exist then what is your contribution so yeah so the second part of our contribution is of uh, how we how we are able to uh, train our model on even much lesser data because as you said the state of the art models definitely they are like really good and they have 98% accuracy but again those companies have access to tons of data and we have basically use a much smaller data set with so, huge number of input so, features how many features are there in your data set Yes, sir. So, uh, in one part, in one data set which we have added, we have concatenated many. But one has around one eighty three features. The Android so, data set. So, all features are important, or some features are not important. Out of uh, some, some features have a very low correlation with the class label. So, so, some are not important. So, have you used any feature selection mechanism? So, I I created a, a custom use algorithm which basically it would uh, take the correlation of each each and every column. With the output, and if the corresponding score is significant enough, like let's say that the correlation of point five or greater, only then it's being selected in the model training. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much.
थैंक यू यू कैन स्टॉप शेयरिंग विल गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट पेपर टाइटल एज सिक्योरिटी इन आई पी बेस्ड आई ओ टी नोड एंड डिवाइस ऑथेंटिकेशन कैन यू प्लीज शेयर योर स्क्रीन Ma'am, please share your screen and unmute. No, uh, sir. Why uh, the sharing option is un unavailable in my system? Why I share it? Okay, okay. Wait, wait, ma'am. Wait. एक मैम यू विल हैव शेयर स्क्रीन ऑप्शन एट द बॉटम ग्रीन बटन शेयर स्क्रीन बटन यस यस बट द ऑप्शन इज सर अनेबल इज नॉट अनेबल नो मैम एक्चुअली इट इज देयर यू हैव शेयर्ड योर आई थिंक कैमरा जस्ट स्टॉप शेयरिंग एंड अगेन शेयर इट Yes, it is coming. Minimize this, ma'am, and open your PPTs. while sharing ma'am uh, please share your complete uh, desktop not just any one screen any one window share with uh, complete desktop uh, we are able to see only your browser window and that is also stuck Uh, you please try again by stop sharing click on stop sharing and share it again ma hello huh. and please share it again yes ma'am unmute yourself and uh, continue ma'am ma'am unmute yourself ma'am unmute yourself Ma'am, you are not audible. Please unmute yourself. Uh, stop Sir, sharing. Now again. I am audible. Yes, yes. now audible, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please continue. Oh. Okay. Uh, so uh, I am Shilpa Sarvaya from Maharashtra. My paper ID is eighty six, and I am working. under the guidance of dr dn satange sir from amravati university sant gadge baba amravati university i am happy and lucky being part of this beautiful platform for the research today i am presenting a presentation on security in ip based iot node and device authentication these are the contents of my presentation 
now i start from abstract node communication in iot network sometime get hacked and wrong operations performed if it happen then there will be a chance to go for heavy loss so that proposed methodology improve the communications network with the implementation of ip binding technique and the uses of random encryption selection process nodes like sender and receiver data will be sent to receive in which the received data need to be valid and decrypted using share keys into the packet in introduction uh, in uh, 2050 every electronic devices getting to be control and operate through mobile phone so that the proposed methodology will help to cross check the sender and the receiver node which keep the security up and maintain the variation in data handling in figure in figure in figure 1 uh, we establish a secure communications between the node and device binding Uh, these are the motivations but here we explain due to the time binding concern only the main motivation is authentication and access control which continuously share a data secure data uh, this is a gap analysis uh, we study this gap uh, we find out this gap analysis after the study of literature survey uh, in my proposed methodology we improve the trusted ip factor Uh, that is uh, uh, that is depend on after finding the node factor ip factor and trust factor these are the objectives i try to achieve in my result the main objective is to implement the various encryption technique over signal data transmission and to develop the secure sender and receiver verification technique these are the tools i use in my proposed methodology this is my main proposed methodology in this uh, uh, in this methodology the iot signal is sent in the form of data to the iot device when uh, which the data is get transferred from one end to another in the network if data or the signal is get altered by intruder then it will highly impact on iot devices it will cause a big damage to the iot devices to overcome this problem this proposed methodology system encryption and decryption technique is used to make the data more secure this is the advanced architecture of our proposed methodology here totally we uh, uh, the main method here we use it that is ip binding ip binding is a technique which is used to find out or identification of trusted nodes multi or single node in iot network the binding of ip address getting to be work out in which the ip of sender and receiver is get bind with a packet of message and sent over the network in which sender node will receive the data from iot board performing ip binding then encryption over the uh, received data form a signal packet of that which is lit, uh, literally sh uh, shared to the cloud via network this is the login panel of node and device this is a secure uh, designed for the secure communication in figure 4 we create a virtual node creator in network in figure 5 we create a virtual device creator in network after that here we display the admin dashboard with the node and device detail and this dashboard also help to control all nodes and data trans and their data transmission this is the secure protocol system flow chart in this flow chart we check the ip address of both node as well as device if the ip if the ip is valid then perform the encryption after applying the ip binding otherwise the algorithm is stop in this uh, this is the secure protocol system flow chart of my steps here this is the main algorithm i use in my proposed work in this algorithm first we split the ip get every character separately determine ascii generate random number sum the random number with ip convert to character merge all splitted character get encoded ip 
After that, we get the list of trusted device IP and node IP. And after that, after applying the IP binding technique, we, de we get the received network data. And we also attach this result to the Arduino platform. Then we get the active object detections. Now I conclude that so that the proposed method mechanism which authenticate and verify data at the time of sending as well as receiving, which make the IoT network more secure. The goal of this module help researcher and designer to select the convenient protocol system and security mechanism for each security layer to secure data and smart object. The security protocol system is used to prevent or decrease attacks, threats, and various type of problems that occur during the device authentication process. These are the main references I included in my paper. Thank you. Hello, madam. Yes. Uh, okay. What are the different authentication techniques in terms of security are available? Uh, sir, that is uh, integra uh, integration, confidentiality, and non-repudiation. I am asking about the authentication techniques or algorithms available. What are the different algorithms are available for authentication? Yes, sir. That is uh, uh, AES, AES CCM, counter, uh, and AES uh, GCM. And uh, what are the encryption techniques are available? Encryption techniques are, sir, for RS, RSA. Okay. Okay. In your work, uh, you mentioned about encryption. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, which encryption technique you have used here? Uh, sir, here we use the random encryption technique using the combination of AES CCM and AES GCM. What is meant by GCM? Uh, uh, AES CCM is uh, advanced encryption standard for glacier's counter mode and CCM is the counter mode. So what is the difference between AES, original AES and yes, yes. algorithms you mentioned? What is the difference? Yes, yes. Uh, sir, in uh, uh, simple AES, the 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 counter mode is not available. Here we use the matna. Here we use the uh, big uh, bigger bit size or key size. That means uh, you want to say modes block uh, cipher modes of operation. Yes, 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 uh, yes, yes, yes. I, I exit. It is yes, not sir. available in AES. Are you sure? Uh, uh, sir. Available is, but uh, I use this algorithm because uh, block um, in block cipher, uh, this algorithm is betterly work in terms of uh, access control and authentication. AES is a block cipher or stream cipher? Uh, AES is a, yes sir, block cipher. What is the block size? In AES, sir, mm, yes. uh, is a 56. Okay. Uh, now, madam, I have one more question. Uh, yes, you, yes, sir. Yes. How you can transfer the key? How you can share this key with the user, end user? Uh, sir, I you apply the IP binding. How, IP uh, means uh, we get the uh, we get the node IP and we get the uh, device IP. Now and you we mentioned, yes. you mentioned somewhere for a multiple uh, nodes or single node. Uh, sir, uh, multi, uh, for multiple, we take multiple or single according to our need. No, is there is a need to find out the different nodes in a single node architecture? Yes, a single, yes. Or in number. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. And uh, you not given your any results in terms of some, what are the results are there? Okay. No, sir, uh, sir, actually just I am working on this algorithm. So I am not getting up to the result point. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any question from audience? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, please uh, stop sharing your screen. Uh, I will call the last paper of this uh, session. Paper ID is 
and title is design of neural network assisted blockchain based peer to peer electrical energy trading platform please uh, share your screen um just a second uh is it is the ppt able uh, visible make it in a presentation mode okay is it fine now yes please continue okay a very good afternoon to all the uh, the session chair and all the uh, participants i am dr manish kumar tukral i am working as a faculty in the department of electrical and electronics engineering manipal university jaipur and uh, today i am here to present a paper whose title is design of neural network assisted blockchain based peer to peer electrical energy trading platform okay i am not able to change my slide actually mm -hmm. i am not able to change Please my slide stop sharing and uh, share your okay, okay. window uh, yes now it is changing yeah. okay so uh, before i begin with the work a uh, little bit background of blockchain technology so uh, the name blockchain technology is because uh, here what we do we store uh, the data which we call it as transactions in blockchain uh, in the form of uh, uh, cryptographic uh, uh, value in the block and uh, each blocks are chained together uh, with the help of uh, hash pointers so that's why we call it as uh, this as blockchain and uh, the beauty of this blockchain technology is that data once uh, stored in the blockchain it is immutable in nature so in in that way it is very much secure technology to store a data uh, so so this is what this uh, slide says uh, whatever i have spoken just now where you see that block 13 is uh, is connected to block 14 through a hash pointer and we have different transactions stored in each blocks so anyone who is trying to manipulate any transaction in uh, in a, in a block then what will happen the block hash will change and uh, and it will be it will be changing the block hash of each and every block so uh, you require a very intense computation power to find a valid valid block hash uh, so as to manipulate any data in the blockchain so that is why it is a secure uh, data uh, uh, storage technology and uh, uh, hence immutable so the same thing out here so now uh, when this block tech, uh, blockchain technology was uh, introduced uh, the the prime uh, uh use case that was introduced was uh, bitcoin but uh, the blockchain technology application uh, became uh, prevalent or we can say generalized after the introduction of smart contracts so smart contracts is, is nothing but we basically uh, code the contract it is a digital contract or we put the contract between the two person in the form of coding and this contract is saved in the blockchain in the form of transaction so once this uh, contract is saved in the blockchain the contract can not be changed and this uh, contracts we call as smart contracts and they uh, are uh, executed once uh, the conditions required for the are met now my work so here what i have done is i have applied the technique of blockchain technology in peer to peer energy trading now uh, in today scenario the uh, energy trading that we do is with uh, a central uh, distribution authority like if i am a consumer i can buy electricity from a central distribution authority and suppose if i have a solar panel i can sell it to a central distribution authority but in future it is uh, uh, it is uh, what to say uh, planned that uh, we will be able to do Uh, the electricity trading from uh, from peer to peer in the sense that suppose if i am a consumer of electricity 
and i ho i have the uh, the renewable energy installation in my premise premise now if i have excess energy and i want to sell it then i become a prosumer so if you see uh, there are two blocks out here consumer and prosumer so basically prosumer is one who is consumer as well as the the seller or, or who is who, who buys us energy and who also who can sell the energy so in future it is planned that uh, they, we can, we will be able to implement the electricity trading between consumer and prosumer now uh, for that we will use blockchain technology because uh, since this energy trading will be peer to peer so all the peers they will make a contract among each other Uh, based on which the electricity trading will be done and that smart contract or that contract will be uh, will be uh, uh, what to say stored in the blockchain so what i have done i have designed a sm uh, smart contract for peer to peer electricity trading and i have uh, i have uh, uh, launched it on the uh, blockchain plat platform for that i have used a, a robsten blockchain which is a test blockchain uh, platform and then i have implemented the electricity trading now here i have used the neural network models uh, simply because suppose if i am a consumer and i want to sell my electricity right so i will put a uh, bid uh, uh, rather sorry i will put a auction that i will be able to sell this much of electricity at uh, this time tomorrow uh, and at at that particular price so to be precise uh, on my uh, promise that i will be able to suffice or provide this much amount of electricity i should have a right prediction of how much energy my renewable energy source can produce so for that the prosumer uses uh, the wind power prediction neural network based model or solar power based prediction model based on the prediction uh, the prosumer puts the auction and uh, and and then he puts the auction on the uh, uh, by by uh, by uh, what to say activating the smart contract so now this is the algorithm that i have designed uh, for electricity trading so here what prosumer does uh, prosumer gets a prediction of solar radiation and wind speed using uh, neural network based prediction model so first uh, the the prosumer he gets the, uh, the 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 predicted value of the solar radiation and wind speed and from there the prosumer is able to estimate uh, the solar power or wind power the prosumer will be able to produce uh, in step 2 now uh, in step 3 the prosumer places the bid uh, 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 and then in uh, step 4 the prosumer enters the following parameters in the smart contract in order to auction solar and wind power like in uh, uh, in smart contract the prosumer will enter the company registration number uh, because you have to be a authenticated uh, uh, company uh, to which the other consumers will be dealing with then you have to have the vat registration number technology band means whether it is solar or wind then auction type offered there are different types of auctions like english auction type there are different types of auction types so amount of solar or wind power that i am willing to sell and a minimum bid amount for solar and wind power which i want then time of supply of solar and wind power and bidding window time so all these uh, parameters the prosumer will be entering in the smart contract and it will be the prosumer who will be deploying the smart contract as shown in step 5 so uh, basically the prosumer will be the auction manager he will be uh, the one who will be controlling the bidding time and and uh, the closing time of the bid so in step 6 the uh, if you see the bidding uh, bidder after seeing the details offered by the prosumer in step 4 enters the option in smart contract whether to buy wind power or solar power if bidder has opted for solar then he goes to step 7 else go else he goes to step step 9 so after the uh, manager has uh, uh, deployed the smart contract the bidders are now it is open for the bidders to bid for the uh, electricity power that they want to uh, buy so uh, so now in step 7 the bidder enters the bidding amount of solar power if a, if a bidder wants to buy the solar uh, power then he will go to step 7 and uh, he will buy the solar power by bidding for the uh, solar energy in the smart contract so now in step 8 uh, if the bid amount of the solar power is greater than uh, what we say 
then the minimum bid and also more than the highest bid offered by then the bid is accepted by the smart contract else the bid is rejected so the criteria uh, that is uh, uh, what to say coded in the smart contract is that if the bid amount bidded by the bidder is greater than the minimum bid asked by the uh, the presumer then only the bid will be accepted else the bid will be rejected now if a presumer is uh, uh, willing to buy wind power then he will go to step 9 accordingly he will bid uh, as he did for solar and in steps uh, 10 say same thing the bid amount should be uh, greater than the minimum bid amount asked and in uh, step 11 the auction manager calls uh, function in smart contract to end auction so basically this uh, manager of the smart contract which is the presumer he has the rights to uh, end the auction and after the auction ends uh in step 12 the winner of the bid is uh, announced uh and uh, in steps uh, 13 if you see if you see those bidders who have lost the bid they will get their uh, money back in their uh, in their uh, wallet and in step 14 presumer supplies the power and wind uh, uh, power and wind power solar power and wind power to the uh, presumers who have won the auction sir uh, 10 minutes um, over sir okay so i am again this uh, slide is stuck Please hold. Again, this slide is stuck. Okay. Now here I have shown in table. So I have uh, created uh, five accounts uh, on on MetaMask, and uh, out of which one account is of presumer, and other four accounts are of consumers. And the, uh, in table uh, seven, which is shown, is of uh, uh, what to say the initial uh, uh, balance of uh, all these accounts. In table. Uh, next table you see the amount which is bid by different uh, consumers and in uh, then uh, you see next table the uh, amount left in the consumer account after they have bid it and uh, this is a demonstration that i have shown which i have the trading i have uh, done on the robson uh, test network here i have uh, so you can uh, uh, different conclusion sir conclusion okay sir so finally these are all the, this i have uh, i have shown the demonstration and uh, th this i have uh, launched on robson test network and ether scan you can uh, see this contract with this contract address which i have shown so fi so finally the conclusion is that uh, i have designed a peer to peer latency trading platform on the uh, robson blockchain uh, robson uh, test network and uh, this blockchain uh, network is assisted by the uh, neural network based solar wind power energy prediction so these are my references okay thank you uh, what is the research component in your work right sir uh, in most of the existing literature i have seen that uh, uh, this peer to peer energy trading platform uh, although uh, people have uh, what to say proposed uh, the algorithms but those algorithms are uh, what to say deployed on the central server so central servers are very much prone to uh, to to uh, what to say uh, there is a security issues moreover if i have if uh, peers are there why they will trust the central server there can be biasing by the central server so in if the if the algorithm is deployed on the smart contract and it is deployed in the blockchain then people will be rest assured that the smart contract cannot be manipulated and uh, so people are this from my literature server i have seen that So, people have not hello can we say this application sorry sir this is the application of blockchain yeah correct this is a application of blockchain uh, in this particular case okay so uh, okay you mention about the security issues there are different security issues in centralized system okay just you mention about it so what are the security issues are there and how you resolve those using blockchain all right so if i uh, take this particular scenario uh, suppose if i have five people who are engaged in peer to peer latency trading it may happen that if i uh, if i uh, launch my algorithm on a central server a person who if he is if he is able to act, who is, who has the access to the central uh, server he may do some biasing uh, so that a particular consumer or presumer he may get the benefit in monetary basis i am asking yeah. about security issues okay 
so secure security issues uh, one can be we can have the we can have the integrity issue as a security issue because if the program of the algorithm which is coded if it is manipulated in the central server then it will it may create uh, what to say uh, the the biasing integrity issue is 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 one hello in centralized system there are also the solution for security issues yeah how you can deny can we digital signature on the centralized system to provide the uh, properly or not uh, digital signatures uh, yes for authentication we can use digital signature in central server system so uh, okay for uh, what are the different security algorithms are used in blockchain uh okay so we have uh, uh, proof of work proof of authority then we have byzantine fault tolerance okay thank so, you okay thank you any question from no okay thank you all the best thank you sir thank you sir thank you you can stop sharing and uh, with this i will conclude this uh, session 2 of today's date thank you all participants you can leave thank you so much pasgari sir for thank you sir thank you
this opportunity to felicitate uh, Dr. Pasgare sir for chairing our second session. नहीं है। इनिमाइज करो ना। 